Good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of CBSC, I would like to welcome all of you to this two days online training program for teachers of CBSC affiliated schools organized jointly by CBSC and NCRT. This online training program is conducted with the aim of smooth transition of teachers and students from old to new textbooks in class uh, third and sixth, which has been released recently by NCRT. For a welcome address, I would like to invite Dr. Ram Shankar, sir, Director, Training Unit, CBSC Headquarters. Uh, over to you, sir. <laughs> So you are muted. Namaskar. My Dr. Ram Shankar, Director of Training. Aap sabhi ka hardik swagat karta hoon. Sarpratham, I swagat karta hoon Professor Dinesh Prasad Saklani ji ka, jo ki Director NCRT hai. Professor Saklani hamesha sikshak aur sikshan se jude muddho par CBSE ko samarthan aur sahiyog प्रदान करते आए हैं ये उन्हीं की अनुकंपा है कि आज का कार्यक्रम हम कर पा रहे हैं मैं इस कार्यक्रम में स्वागत करता हूं श्री हेमंत गुप्ता जी का आप सचिव हैं केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड के खास तौर से शिक्षक प्रशिक्षण में लंबे समय से आप जुड़े रहे हैं आपकी विशेष रुचि रही है आज का कार्यक्रम जो आकार ले रहा है उसके पीछे आपकी प्रेरणा और आपका ही समर्थन है मैं स्वागत करता हूं श्री अनुराग बेहर जी का श्री मंजुल भार्गव जी का साथ ही साथ मैं स्वागत कर रहा हूं प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा जी का मैं स्वागत करता हूं डॉक्टर सुनीति सवल जी का डॉक्टर रोमिला भटनागर जी का डॉक्टर अतुल दुबे जी का डॉक्टर एस बनर्जी जी का और साथ ही साथ एनसीईआरटी के बाकी जो फैकल्टी मेंबर्स हैं एक्सपर्ट्स हैं प्रोफेसर्स हैं उन सबका भी मैं हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूँ इस कार्यक्रम में जब मेरी पहली बार इस बारे में बातचीत प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा जी से हुई तो आपने कहा कि डॉक्टर रामशंकर ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण समय है ग्रेड थर्ड और ग्रेड सिक्स ऐसे में इन शिक्षकों की हैंड होल्डिंग बहुत जरूरी है चूंकि एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एन सी एफ एफ एस और एन सी एफ एस सी के बाद आमूल चूल परिवर्तन शिक्षा जगत में आए हैं तो शिक्षकों का उन जानकारियों के साथ लैस होना बहुत जरूरी है जिससे कि टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस हमारी क्लासेस में बेहतर हो सके इसी अनुक्रम में ये कार्यक्रम दो दिन का ऑनलाइन मोड में किया जा रहा है और मैं आप सबसे ये जानकारी साझा करना चाहता हूं इस समय हमारे साथ में जो सी के 18 सेंटर्स ऑफ एक्सलेंस हैं उनके हेड्स जुड़े हुए हैं साथ ही साथ ए सी एडवांस सेंटर फॉर प्रोफेशनल कंटिन्यूस प्रोफेशनल डेवलपमेंट के हेड वो भी जुड़े हुए हैं और हमारे जो 18 जो सेंटर ऑफ एक्सलेंस है उनमें प्रत्येक सेंटर ऑफ एक्सलेंस से हमने तकरीबन बीस लोगों को आइडेंटिफाई किया है और वो संख्या तकरीबन 360 के आसपास होती है वो भी हमारे साथ जुड़ी है जो कि की रिसोर्स पर्सन के रूप में यहाँ ट्रेनिंग अटेंड कर रही है इसके अलावा ज्यादा से ज्यादा शिक्षकों तक ये बात पहुंचे जो भी स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं हितधारक हैं उन तक ये बात पहुंचे तो हमने यूट्यूब के माध्यम से भी लोगों को जोड़ा इसके अलावा जो हमारे पी विद्या के टीवी चैनल है जैसा की मुझे अभी सूचित किया गया है वो लोग भी इससे जुड़े हुए हैं मैं उम्मीद करता हूँ कि जो दो दिन ये हमारा कार्यक्रम है वो अपने लक्ष्यों की प्राप्ति में सफल होगा और खास तौर से आज का दिन भी बहुत विशेष है आज वर्ल्ड आर्ट डे है तो आर्ट इंटीग्रेटेड लर्निंग के ऊपर हम लगातार कार्यक्रम करते रहे हैं आज ऐसा ही शुभ दिन है मैं आशा करता हूं मैं उम्मीद रखता हूं कि दो दिन हमारे शिक्षकों के प्रशिक्षण के लिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण साबित होंगे बहुत बहुत सभी का एक बार पुनः स्वागत और धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच सर Further to brief on the objective of this online training program, I would like to invite Ranjana Arora, ma'am, professor and head, Department of Curriculum Development and Studies, NCRT. Ranjana, ma'am, over to you, please. Thank you, thank you, Shweta ji, and thank you, Ram Shankar ji. Ah, first of all, CBSE ka bahut bahut dhanyavad. Ah, bahut hi short notice par. एन सी आर टी के रिक्वेस्ट पर ये कार्यक्रम ऑर्गेनाइज किया जा रहा है और इतने अच्छी संख्या में शिक्षकों का जुड़ना और उनके जो उनके जो ट्रेनिंग हेड्स का जुड़ना ये हमारे लिए बहुत ही बहुत ही अच्छी बात है सबको पुनः नमस्कार और यहाँ पर इस प्रोग्राम की एक छोटी सी विशेषता जरूर बताना चाहेंगे कि इस प्रोग्राम में हमारे पास 
फोर फाइव सेट्स ऑफ पीपल ज्वाइंड अस और सबसे पहले हम आपको बताना चाहेंगे कि हमारे साथ नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ओवरसाइट कमेटी के मेंबर्स हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं जिसमें हमारे रिस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर डी पी सकलानी जी हैं और श्री अनुराग बहर जी हैं जो कि अजीम प्रोहिम जी फाउंडेशन से हैं और मंजूर भार्गव जी जो कि हमारे नेशनल सिलेबस एंड टीचिंग लर्निंग मटीरियल कमेटी के को चेयर हैं वो भी हमसे जुड़े हुए हैं और इसके अलावा हमारे साथ करिकुलर एरिया ग्रुप जो हमने बनाया था प्रिपरेटरी स्टेज के लिए और कुछ और करिकुलर एरिया ग्रुप से भी मेंबर्स हैं जिनमें हमारी सुनीति सानवाल जी चमन आरा जी वरदा जी रोमिला जी और नीलकंठ जी ये लोग हमारे साथ यहाँ पर भी जुड़े हुए हैं कल कुछ और लोग हमें यहाँ पर ज्वाइन करेंगे और ना केवल ये सी जो कि इम्प्लीमेंटिंग जिन जिनकी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन की है टेक्स्ट बुक सिलेबस और एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी को क्लासरूम तक ले जाने की है सी बी एस ई के ऑफिशियल्स हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं हिमांशु जी और रामशंकर जी और सबसे बड़ी बात है जिन्हें हमारे जो ये विजन है जो एन सी एफ का जो विजन है जो एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी का जो विजन है वो जो क्लास रूम में लेकर जाएंगे एक एक बच्चे तक पहुँचाएंगे वो हमारे साथ वो टीचर्स भी जुड़े हुए हैं इसके अलावा हमारे साथ प्रोग्राम ऑफिस जो हमारे नेशनल सिलेबस एंड टीचिंग लर्निंग मटेरियल कमेटी को सपोर्ट करने के लिए यहाँ पर एन सी बनाया गया है जिसके हेड गजानन जी हैं वो भी हमारे साथ हैं और प्रोग्राम ऑफिस के तमाम मेम्बर्स हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं तो आप देखेंगे कि यहाँ पर हमारे साथ वो लोग भी हैं जिन्होंने एन 2020 और एन 2023 को बनाने में योगदान दिया वो लोग भी हैं जो टेक्स्ट बुक्स और सिलेबस बनाने में योगदान दे रहे हैं और जिन्होंने दिया है और वो लोग भी हैं जो इन्हें क्लासरूम तक ले जाने के लिए जो है तत्पर हैं तो ये ये बहुत ही एक ऐसी एक ऐसी गैदरिंग है हम लोग बहुत ही फॉर्चुनेट हैं कि हम इस गैदरिंग का हिस्सा बन रहे हैं और हमें लगता है कि इस गैदरिंग को देखते हुए भी हमारे सामने अब उद्देश्य बिल्कुल बिल्कुल स्पष्ट है कि हम नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 और नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ट्वेंटी के जो विजन है जो पर्सपेक्टिव है जो जो पेडागॉजी जो असेसमेंट पर जो रिकमेंडेशन है उन्हें किस तरह से ट्रांसलेट किया गया है टेक्स्ट बुक्स और सिलेबस में वो हमें यहाँ पर बताया जाएगा समझाया जाएगा और किस तरीके से अब वो टेक्स्ट बुक्स का विजन और वो टेक्स्ट बुक्स में जो बातें आ रही है जो ट्रांसलेशन जो हो रहा है वो आप कैसे स्टूडेंट्स तक पहुंचाएंगे पेरेंट्स तक पहुंचाएंगे इस पर भी हम लोग अपने टेक्स्ट बुक कोर्डिनेटर्स के माध्यम से चर्चा करेंगे तो ये एक एक बड़ा ऑब्जेक्टिव है इन इस इस ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम का बहुत शॉर्ट नोटिस पर और बहुत शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन का है लेकिन हम लोगों को जैसे कि कहावत है गागर में सागर और हम लोग यही उम्मीद करते हैं कि हमारा जो है ये दो दिन का प्रोग्राम जो है वो इस बात को सिद्ध करेगा और ये बातें जो है जो हम लोग आप लोगों तक ले जाना चाहते हैं वो एक एक बच्चे तक पहुँचेंगी और एक एक पेरेंट तक पहुँचेंगी यही हमारा इस प्रोग्राम का उद्देश्य है और ओवर टू श्वेता जी thank you so much ma'am for setting the context of this training program uh, with your permission sir i would like to invite professor dinesh saklani sir director ncert to say a few words over to you sir namaskar so, uh, good evening and uh, thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, important uh, program uh, as we know that uh, we have very important <clears throat> task ahead we have with us secretary cbsc and uh, director academic pandey ji cbsc other officers faculty members teachers our ncert faculty members professor ranjana arora head curriculum department professor suniti sanwal head de and coordinator of the uh, preparatory sections of uh, this uh, book development committee we have online with us uh, sir anurag behar ji uh, professor manjul bhargav ji and as ranjana ji mentioned that five sets of people are with us and these five sets of people are the important people who are playing pivotal role in uh, not only formulating the policy 
and the NCF, but also developing the test books and learning teaching material, and also disseminating that through the training and the key resource person who are going to be benefited by this training. This is the most important thing I want to say in front of you. If we are connected, we all know about NEP. We don't need to tell you more about it. NCF School Education came. You all have read about it. We are taking a lot of money from this. We are taking a lot of money from CBSC and our NCRT. We are taking a lot of money from NCRT. एक लाइट मूड में बात करता हूं कि हमने तो भोजन बना लिया है और बहुत अच्छा बनाया है अब आपको सर्व कर रहे हैं और आप कहां तक ले जाएंगे स्कूल के प्रत्येक बच्चे तक तो मैं हमेशा इस बात पे जोर देता हूं कि जो मटेरियल हमने बनाया है वो सब सब लोगों की फीडबैक से बना है सीबीएसई के टीचर्स भी इसमें रहे हैं और प्रोफेसर्स भी रहे हैं एक्सपर्ट्स भी रहे हैं हमारे जो एन में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाने वाले प्रोफेसर मंजुल भार्गव और श्री अनुराग भेड़ जी हमारे साथ प्रोग्राम ऑफिस एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण काम कर रहा है हमारे साथ पूरा सारा जो प्रोग्राम हमारा बनता है टीचिंग लर्निंग मेटेरियल डेवलप होता है उसको सपोर्ट करने के लिए एक सिस्टम बना है श्री गजानंद जी और आप सभी लोग हम ये पुस्तकें जो आई हैं आप देखेंगे कि जो कॉमेंट भी मिल रहे हैं हमको एक नए प्रकार की पुस्तकें हैं और ये नए प्रकार की पुस्तकें हमें किस तरह से लोगों के तक जानी है बच्चों तक जानी है ये सुनिश्चित करने के लिए कार्यक्रम आयोजित किया जा रहा है आप देखिए हमारे पास जो हिंदी की किताब आई है आप उसमें देखेंगे उसका कवर पेज है उसमें जो रूटेडनेस है भारतीयता है और जो इक्कीसवीं शताब्दी की जो हमारी स्किल्स हैं विकास के जो गतिमान है वो प्रदर्शित किए गए हैं क्योंकि चित्रों के माध्यम से बहुत कुछ बातें समझ में आती हैं और समझाई जाती हैं तो यही प्रयास किया है उसके जितने भी चित्र हैं इलस्ट्रेशन के रूप में जो बने हैं उन चित्रों पे आप विचार करेंगे तो आपको लगेगा कि उससे बहुत कुछ सिखाया जा सकता है बहुत कुछ सीखा जा सकता है बहुत सारी बातें आ सकती हैं सो वी नो दैट These illustrations, these pictures, right from the cover page and the name itself, as we have named our books, at least language books, on the name of uh, musical instruments. So why music? Why musical instruments? Last year also, we named the books uh, on musical instruments. Why? Because music gives us joy. It is a source of joy. And uh, in music, when we are listening it, we get elated and thrilled. So that is spirit and that is the pedagogy. You know, uh, we have ensured that books should be taken away from the root learning method and experiential learning through twice-based pedagogy. That is important. So getting joy from learning, that is the essence. And the name of the books itself gives uh, this expression that, yes, the names are on musical instruments. So it is one, one thing, it is rooted. Our uh, traditional musical instruments, they are our treasures. And uh, how the students or the kids will be introduced to those, those instruments. So that is important. That's why we have named our books on the name of the musical instruments. One thing is important. And then the illustrations. And then the material inside the book. How the material has been developed, you will be knowing that. And you have might have known that because we have uh, uploaded the books on uh, our platform, our website. And uh, very short, shortly, we are going to get the printed copies. We have already given the books for printing. So whether it is English book or a test book or it is Hindi test book or mathematics books, wonderful books we have uh, developed with the help of our curricular area groups and experts and especially the efforts put by our uh, you know, co-chairperson, NSTC Professor Manjul Bhargav in developing all the books and all the other members. So this is one thing. And now what to do with these books? We you we will we'll see that this time we have introduced a foundation course for three new subjects. 
this is the first time we are introducing such type of course because we deliberately do this because we don't want that the new subjects should directly as a in the form of books should go to the students because they will not be able to understand what is this and in order to introduce the new subject foundation course in the form of very lively activities and uh, material we are we have ensured that 15 days this course should be there so for this purpose how the books has, have to be taken to the classroom to the students so that they may get full benefit of the books and they uh, may transit to the uh, you know new pedagogy that is the uh, joyful learning joyful pedagogy and experience and learning that should be ensured so philosophy of the nep should be understood through this process only and for that purpose we have developed these books and uh, here we are uh, uh, going to take the books further uh, so my emphasis is always that when we say that we are uh, going to make the uh, uh, develop the compet uh, competency or the capacity build the capacity of the key resource persons what is the meaning of building the capacity first of all we have to understand what is our present status of understanding the uh, our our learning teaching material that is one thing how we have been taking that further in in past that is another thing and how we will ensure that in future so after getting this you know brief introductory or uh, capacity building uh, program i hope that those who are going to be benefited by this and those who are going to enhance the cap their capacity they should realize that yes they have changed their capacity they have enhanced their capacity only then the course will be effective otherwise not so my first request is that all all of us should ensure that the capacity should be built not only by saying that we have got this training program but the realization should be there yes uh, earlier we were doing like that but now we are doing differently the one thing is that pre and post capacity building program so assessment should be there feedback should be there from your side also you uh, if possible you please share the feedback how you have benefited from this capacity building program so that is important key resource persons how the key capacity of the key resource persons have been enhanced that is very important once you realize that your capacity has been enhanced and you have transformed your way of taking the material to the classrooms that will be very important and significant step for us but from there the another course of action will be started that you are going to deliver this course to the teachers the teachers who are the vital link who are the pivot of the uh, our this uh, learning teaching process they are the people who are going to interact with the parents and the uh, students they are going to take the things downwards to the grassroots level so again when you deliver this course to those and you try to enhance the capacity of the teachers uh, and orient them to this these new uh, learning teaching material and books they should also be note that they should also note that yes before going through this course they had some problems but now they are very well versed in the new sort, uh, sort of uh, learning teaching material so that difference if they mark in themselves then only then will, they will it will be possible for them to, uh, to teach the students differently effectively and that will ensure the success of this program so at this level also when the key resource persons are going to take away this course among the teachers the key resource persons should also ensure that they should get the feedback from the teachers two types of feedbacks how they had been doing earlier and how they will do after getting this training program once this is done this is ensured then we'll get the critical comments also if we, if there is some problem in communicating over things to you then we'll rethink and rebuild you know reshape our training programs so that becomes important because traditionally we are doing and we are uh, saying that yes we have built the capacity but we should know that whether really the capacity has been built or not that is very important so if that happens that will enrich our training programs for future also and th then we'll be able to say that yes we have enhanced the capacity of the key resource persons and likely the key resource person will be able to say that we have they have built the capacity of the teachers also so this process should be you know uh, for each and every stakeholder then if teacher go to classroom teacher should also 
adopt the same process. They should ask the students, yes, now we have got the training for these new textbooks. So now we are teaching you differently. So how, what is the difference between our teaching earlier in this, this time after getting trained into this process of uh, new training part, teaching part. So pedagogically or content wise also, and how these students are feeling that they are now uh, more friendly and they are enjoying their learning teaching process in a better way. So this process if adopted, then the students will also give their feedback and the feedback will be important in developing the capacity of the teachers in the real sense of the word as per the requirement of the students. So that will be the key to success of our this training program, our uh, NEP transition program, just we are saying curricular transition uh, program. So this is one part of the curricular transition program. A lot of things will have to be done in future. So I hope that this process will be adopted. And in this way, the books developed by us so beautifully uh, will really be enjoyed by the all stakeholders. And uh, then the flavor of the NEP will be realized, NCF will be realized, and which is going to be uh, very, very beneficial for our uh, school education system. With this, I wish you all the best and hope that we'll get back uh, different sort of feedbacks from you, rich feedback from you. And on that basis, NCRT will also take stock of their training programs. And if required, we'll try to, um, you know, revamp our training program if we get the critical comments from your side. So thank you very much. And with this, I uh, wish you all the best and wish this program a grand success. And our now new session will be enjoyed by our students and they will be really benefited. Thank you to all of you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable inputs on this curriculum transition program. Now, I would like to invite Shri Himanshu Gupta, sir, Secretary CBSC, to address the importance of teachers training. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I hope I am audible. Uh, thank you so much, Saklani Saab, uh, Ranjana Madam, and uh, Ram Shankarji, and uh, Nurag Beher Saab and other team members who are there. Uh, I would like to just mention that it is very, very important that uh, all of our principals and uh, teachers, uh, you know, they go through the content that has been developed by NCRT and they understand the vision of, you know, NEP and NCFSC, what they want to achieve. And uh, one thing is content, the other thing, thing is its delivery. It is very, very important that our teachers understand that anything can only be delivered in classroom when you, you know, you actually not only just go through the content, you make your own notes, you discuss uh, with your fellow colleagues and you, you know, uh, start doing some homework at your end so that you can bring out those changes. Uh, in your classroom pedagogy, the entire idea of bringing new books, as NCRT has said, as per NCFSE, is to make it more enjoyable, more fun activity, involving more activities in the classrooms. Classroom learning should not, you know, be concentrated to a few students, should not be in such a way that uh, it becomes very boring, it is one too many, it should, you know, include as many students as possible. We all understand that in a classroom, majority of the children, uh, multiple children are at multiple, uh, uh, you know, uh, academic levels. So it is very important that as teachers, we uh, devise those strategies where we are able to engage all the children in a meaningful manner. And I think NCRT, that's why is not only just bringing this content, they are including a lot of activities in this uh, set of bridge course as well as in books. So I would just request all the principals and teachers that please make a team in your school. You should have a kind of an academic team which goes through the entire content that has been developed by NCRT and it develops a strategy how it has to be, you know, uh, uh, executed on ground because uh, uh, the lot of energy has been put in by the academicians to you know, completely transform and change the way teaching learning happens in classroom. And we can achieve success in that only when we actually do our own homework as principals and teachers, we make our teams and we do those activities, not only, you know, uh, sincerely, we completely change the way teaching learning happens. 
like in many of the cases you will find that rather than having a setting of uh, one to many classroom maybe a circular setting might help a lot of activities re uh, require principals and teachers to take children out in playgrounds or in outside so include those activities we, we would want that you should include those activities in such a way that you know uh, you are uh, you are able to uh, safely take the children out for these excursions also and you have a feedback mechanism uh, where children can uh, uh, you know uh, uh, get back to you what is what are their learning assessments and your assessments also change more from uh, 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 homework or a, or, or a written based assessment to a competency based assessment so i think it is very important that uh, all the uh, faculty, all the principals and teachers, they go through the content properly. They go through the exercises and the activities that are mentioned and they uh, work out, you know, their in-house mechanisms to implement these things in classroom. A draft timetable has also been given by NCRT. However, it is not, you know, uh, not every school will be able since we have schools all across the country, summer bound and winter bound schools. Many schools would want to tweak that timetable in a way they are able to implement on ground. So that flexibility will definitely be there with all the schools. But we would want that, you know, all the all the principals and teachers, they actually, you know, uh, implement their own strategies of how they want to take such textbooks and the vision of NEP and NCFE in their classrooms, you will have to have multiple, maybe a weekly meetings with your teachers, your primary teachers, your uh, subject teachers, that how it is being implemented in classroom. There might be, you know, uh, uh, earlier, it, it will be a dramatic shift from the way earlier teaching used to happen, where all the classes were in, in same class. Now, perhaps you will be having a lot of movement of children, so you'll have to identify resources also uh, in the school to execute such things in uh, in classroom. But the entire vision of bringing such books is that learning should be child centric, should be fun based, should be in a way that all children, you know, they based upon their own competencies, they learn, they excel and school must become a kind of an atmosphere where each one of not only just children, it's the the teachers and principals and all staffs are learning together. So I think um, uh, all of I'm very happy that uh, the CBSC and NCRT have come up with such a wonderful training program, and I'm sure it will uh, put to rest a lot of doubts that are there in the mind of academicians and my best wishes. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your thoughts on this updated curriculum developed by NCRT. Before we begin the sessions of this program, I would like to invite Shri Anurad, sir, member National Curriculum Framework Oversight Committee for the overview of National Curriculum Framework, school education, syllabus and textbooks. Over to you, Anurag, sir. <laughs> Anurag, sir. Thank you. What do you say? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, it's so wonderful to be here with all of you. It's so wonderful to be here with all of you. And uh, I, I hope my I'm audible. Oh, I so very much. Yeah. I'm audible? Yes, sir. You're, You're audible. audible. So, uh, Shweta ji, if yes, I'm yes, audible, you are yes, sir. Yeah. I think if some people are saying that they, I'm not audible, perhaps it's their line because if I'm audible to you, then yeah. the, my line is fine. Okay, it is clear, sir. Please okay, if the, if the line goes bad, please tell me. Please stop and and tell me. So, uh, I think it's uh, absolutely wonderful that I'm here with all of you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. It is such an extraordinary pleasure, I cannot tell you. Uh, I have had the privilege of being involved uh, from 2017 when we started architecting the national education policy. Dr. Kasturi Rangan, who chaired that committee, when we started working on it, I think our dream was, our absolute dream was, that how will it really make a difference in the hands of teachers 
for the lives of children right so that was the that was the goal that was the objective because all of us know then we can write great policies wonderful documents but the real test of those such policies is does it really make a difference to the lives of the people it is supposed to which in this case are the students and the teachers so uh, it is truly a pleasure thank you very much thank you cbse thank you ncrt for creating this opportunity and inviting me uh, i think you are going to have two wonderful days of discussions with actually the authors who have written these textbooks so they can they can be nothing better than that the very people who envision these textbooks who wrote them in such with so much of care and uh, so much of an eye for detail and so much of a botheration that it must help everybody in the school education system they themselves will be taking you through these books so what i will do very very briefly very very briefly is that i will share with you what was the vision of the national education policy which the national curriculum framework has converted to the reality of school education what are those points and how perhaps are they relevant to you in the school in the classroom or you as a trainer when you when you when you work with teachers who are going to use these books and actually uh, teach the students in their classrooms uh, before i go forward i must i must absolutely share that when i'm going to talk about a few things in such a short session i am not going to be able to share everything that is there in the national curriculum framework or from the national curriculum framework drawn into the syllabus or drawn from the syllabus into the textbooks i cannot share everything i cannot even share the most important of things right so i will share a few of the important things just a few of the important things all of us are in school education we care deeply about our children and therefore i would encourage every one of us present here to actually glance through the national curriculum framework for school education uh, it will be interesting in fact the national curriculum for school education is written with an eye that the real practitioner not just the the very very experts academician but also the practitioner of school education which is people like you and me we should be able to actually draw out everything that is useful for us so with that and with a recap that i'm going to share a few things few important things but not all the important things i'll proceed so i'm going to talk about three things which the national curriculum framework draws from the national education policy and then the manifestation of those three things in the context of the textbooks that you will be taken through in great detail so three things which are there in the ncf drawn from the nep and their manifestation in the textbooks first what the ncf is trying to do is to try and adopt a very practical approach to something which is very important all of us feel for which is all of us believe that the school education system school education has certain kind of aims we want to achieve something to develop good citizens of this country to develop good human beings to develop deep rigorous subject knowledge to develop language capacities right so we have those aims very strong aims very deeply felt aims which is why we are on school education that's why school education is important it is foundational to a democracy now what the ncf tries to do is it tries to take these aims which are the broad aims of school education and then to take them step by step step by step step by step make them more specific more particular more relevant such that they become relevant to a classroom because for example when we say that children should develop 21st century skills that's the aim of school education but what does it mean in a language classroom or what does it mean in the month of august in any classroom right what does it mean what does it mean when you as a trainer are working with teachers or you as a teacher are working with students outside the classroom so what the ncf has done is it has very rigorously taken the aims of school education and drilled it down, down through a mechanism called the learning standards my request to all of you is you should glance through absolutely glance through 
the chapter on learning standards in the NCF. What it does is takes the aims of education, converts that into the, the goals for the subject, converts that to curricular goals for each stage, stage being foundational stage, preparatory stage, middle stage, and so on. And those curricular goals are converted, converted into competencies. Uh, I want to remind all my friends that curricular goals and competencies have very specific meanings. Competency is a word which is used in the outside world very loosely. But competency in the technicality of it in school education has a very specific meaning. So from curricular goals, drawn competencies, competencies drawn learning outcomes, the learning outcomes are what inform the syllabus. So that's the first thing that the NCF tries to make sure that the aims of school education are brought down to the reality of the classroom through the learning standards, which is step by step specificity from curricular goals to competency to learning outcomes, which is what informs the syllabus. Point one. What is the manifestation? What is the implication of this in the textbook? The implication of this on the textbook is that all of us as teachers need to actually understand the learning outcomes. The textbook is not for content coverage. It's not for content coverage. The textbook is an enabler to achieve the learning outcomes and therefore in each chapter, in each section, what is the learning outcome that is being driven for is what one needs to be familiarized with. So we as teachers need to understand what is the learning outcome in the syllabus, which ones are mapping to the desired learning outcome of that particular textbook in those particular chapters. I think that's the key issue, absolutely the key issue, right? So this understanding the development the understanding of the development of learning outcomes derived from the curricular goals and competencies, which is there in the NCF, it's also illustrated in the books. I think that understanding every teacher should have. The teacher should have it in her that I'm not teaching the textbook. I'm not teaching the content of the textbook. The textbook and the content of the textbook or whatever is there in the textbook is just a tool to achieve that learning outcome. So a close grasp of the learning outcome derived from the competency is really the key issue. I'll move on to the second point. The second point is that these aims that we are talking about of NCF drill down to learning outcomes. These learning outcomes are not only about content. It is not about the content. It is about developing capacities and skills. It's about developing values. It's about genuine understanding. So it's like developing the ability to think. When we say language in Hindi, we say vidhas. It's very necessary. But we are talking about the linguistic capacity of a child. Right? So I think it's very important that when you go into the learning outcomes and the correct competencies, we pay attention that each one of these subjects, whether it is mathematics or the languages, all the world around us, each one of them is going to be developing capacities, values, and knowledge, all three, right? And all three will get de developed if we are able to transact inside the classroom with appropriate pedagogy, right? Now, this particular matter of not being focused on the content, being focused on the aims, focused on the competency, focused on the learning outcomes, it has some other implications, which you will be able to see in the textbook, right? One critical implication is that there is an effort to reduce the content. Because if you don't reduce the content, we, we as teachers know you don't perhaps have often enough time space to be able to in, evolve and involve children in the kind of interesting pedagogy which will really build their critical understanding. So I'll just repeat that. It's, I mean, it's not a complicated thing I'm saying, but it's it's a very, very critical thing that in the text, in the syllabus first, drawing from the curricular framework, and then therefore in the textbook, the content is attempted to be reduced. Why? Because then you have the time space in the classroom, in the school, inside the classroom, outside the classroom, to 
to be able to develop the kind of class practices, pedagogical approach, which actually enables the development of genuine understanding, enables the development of values, for example, teamwork and empathy, right? Rather than just being focused on the content. So the design of the syllabus, which is drawing from the learning outcome, is enabling the design of the textbook in a certain manner by which the content is reduced so that you actually can focus on those things, those things being the aims, et cetera, through the right pedagogical approach, rather than saying, let me take the book and let me go through the chapter one after another, and let me do an assessment at the end, right? So I think this is a very important characteristic of the textbook. And again, it draws from this very important emphasis that the development that school education fosters is genuine understanding, capacities, and values, right? There's another implication of this, that the time-space reduction that I'm talking about, that has been attempted, is also because the National Curricular Framework envisions that we are going to give equal importance to art and physical education. We know how much important all these things are, right? But in our school system, too often, too often then for our comfort and our satisfaction, we have not given equal status to all subjects. We have said mathematics becomes very important. I mean, when you go into the higher grades, somehow mathematics becomes very important in science. Maybe physical education doesn't become as important, nor social science for many people. So overall, and certainly in grade three, these, the syllabus drawing from the NCF and the textbooks gives equal space to all the subjects that we are talking about, right? Now, so I'll just recap. One, the NCF is focused on ensuring learning outcomes which are drawn from curricular goals. Teachers should focus on the learning outcomes being developed through the textbooks and not really just the content. Second, the content, the textbook itself is designed such that it gives you the time space to be able to practice the pedagogical approach by which you can develop capacities and values and genuine understanding. And you must use it to the maximum. And there must be one more thing that I should have reminded you earlier, which is the textbooks are just one thing that, I mean, as the NCF says, you know, it's a wonderful line in the NCF. The textbooks are not the be all and end all of a classroom. The textbook should be viewed as a window to the outside world. Use the textbook to do that activity, get them to read something else, go and do that, go and do this, engage people from outside, right? Nevertheless, the second point is the content is designed such that the learning outcomes are achieved, with lesser content with greater pedagogical possibilities. Lastly, and with this third point, I will uh, end my remarks. Lastly, each subject has its specificity. We know that. In languages, we must have a truly balanced approach. It must be whole language, and it must also be Akshar Gyan, right? And we should not swing on any side. In mathematics, we must develop interest first of all, not scare children, right? And you must develop interest. At the same time, one can't ignore the procedural aspect of mathematics, right? It's a balance. So every one of the subjects has its own particularity particularity. Our colleagues, our friends who will take you to the books will take you through them in great detail. But again, I think if you are a language teacher, if you're a mathematics teacher, if you're a world around us teacher, or you do teach many subjects, I would implore you, I would urge you that you take that particular chapter from the National Curricular Framework. It'll be 15 pages, 15, 17 pages. Read that because that's a wonderful context to the enterprise that you're getting onto, which is really bringing the NCF and the NEP to life in the reality of our classrooms. So uh, with that, I'm very excited to be here, very excited to see all of you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, CBSE and NCRD. I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anurag sir, for sharing such a relevant insights on NCF SE and its correlation uh, with the syllabus, curriculum, and textbooks. Now, at, in the end, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sandeep Jain, sir, Joint Secretary, Training Unit, CBSE Headquarters, for the vote of thanks to our esteemed panelists.
धन्यवाद श्रोता सभी को मेरा नमस्कार राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति 2020 और राष्ट्रीय पाठ्यचर्य 2023 में जो लक्ष्य तय किए गए हैं वो लक्ष्य जमीन पर आ सके इसके लिए इस महत्वपूर्ण प्रोग्राम का आयोजन किया गया है जो संयुक्त रूप से केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड और एनसीईआरटी ने संयुक्त रूप से इस कार्यक्रम को आयोजित किया है आज के इस कार्यक्रम आयोजन के लिए मैं सर्वप्रथम धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहूंगा सीबीएसई परिवार के मुखिया श्री राहुल सिंह जी चेयरमैन सीबीएसई बी मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहूंगा प्रोफेसर दिनेश प्रसाद सकलानी जी का डायरेक्टर एनसीईआरटी आपने कृपा पूर्वक इस कार्यक्रम को आयोजित करने की सहमति प्रदान की मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहूंगा सीबीएसई के सेक्रेटरी श्री हिमांशु गुप्ता जी आई का आपके उद्बोधन के लिए मैं आभारी हूं मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहूंगा हमारे ऊर्जावान डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर राम शंकर जी का जिन्होंने बड़ी मेहनत के साथ इस कार्यक्रम को कोऑर्डिनेट किया मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करना चाहूंगा प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोरा जी का एनसीईआरटी से आपने इस कार्यक्रम के ऑब्जेक्टिव्स को बहुत अच्छे से हम सभी को समझाया धन्यवाद मैडम मैं आभार व्यक्त करना चाहूंगा श्री अनुराग बेहर जी का जो कि नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क आउटसाइड कमेटी के सदस्य हैं आपका एक जो सेशन था आपने जो भी अपना विचार व्यक्त किए वो निश्चित रूप से हमारे शिक्षक साथियों के लिए लाभकारी होंगे आज किसी कारण बस श्री प्रोफेसर मंजुल भार्गव ज्वाइन नहीं कर सके मैं उनका भी आभार व्यक्त करता हूं उनके योगदान के लिए जो उन्होंने एन को और एन में उन्होंने जो अपना योगदान दिया उनके लिए मेरा आभार है एन के अन्य फैकल्टी मेंबर्स जो अभी आगे अलग अलग विषयों से संबंधित सेशन लेने वाले हैं मैं उनका भी आभार व्यक्त करता हूं मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूं सी के सभी सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस के हेड्स का जिन्होंने इस कार्यक्रम को आयोजित करने में और इसका जानकारी लगभग हर एक विद्यालय तक पहुंचाने में की है मैं सभी हेड्स का धन्यवाद देता हूं सभी सीओई से जुड़े हुए डिस्ट्रिक्ट ट्रेनिंग कोऑर्डिनेटर्स का मैं धन्यवाद करता हूं मैं धन्यवाद करता हूं ट्रेनिंग यूनिट की आईटी यूनिट से सुदेश गुलिया जी का जो इस आईटी सपोर्ट के लिए और ये लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग के लिए और ये ऑनलाइन प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज करने के लिए मैं धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करता हूं अपनी साथी श्वेता का जो बड़े कुशलतापूर्वक इस कार्यक्रम को संचालित कर रही हैं मैं अपनी साथी तुषारा रामाजी और बाकी सारी ट्रेनिंग यूनिट के साथियों का धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करता हूं और साथ ही साथ हमारे प्रिंसिपल्स टीचर्स जो इसको ऑनलाइन माध्यम से जुड़े हुए हैं वेबेक्स माध्यम से और यूट्यूब के माध्यम से लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग में देख रहे हैं अभी मैं देख पा रहा हूँ कि लगभग तीस से अधिक आ, लोग इस कार्यक्रम से ऑन यूट्यूब लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग के माध्यम से जुड़े हुए हैं और मैं आप सभी को बताना चाहता हूं कि लगभग लगभग ढाई लाख से भी ज्यादा इस यूट्यूब चैनल के सब्सक्राइबर हैं तो तय मानिए कि शाम तक यह जो नंबर है वो डेढ़ लाख को पार करेगा तो इन सभी लोग जो दूरस्थ छोटे छोटे जगह से हमसे जुड़े हुए हैं मैं उन सभी का आभार करता हूँ और साथ ही साथ मैं आपसे निवेदन करता हूँ कि इस कार्यक्रम का लाभ लें और अच्छे से एन को अपने अपने विद्यालयों में इंप्लीमेंट करें धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच संदीप सर नाउ विद दिस इनग्रल से ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम कम्स टू एंड एंड नाउ द फोरम इज हैंडेड ओवर टू रंजना मैम फॉर टू बिगिन विद सब्जेक्ट स्पेसिफिक सेशन फॉर द डे वन रंजना मैम I'm muted. You are muted, ma'am. Now, am I audible? Yes, yes, ma'am. You are audible. 
So uh, thank you, Shweta ji, uh, uh, very nicely coordinating the inaugural session. So now I would like to invite uh, Professor uh, Suniti Sanwal ji, uh, Head Department of Elementary Education and uh, uh, convener, member convener, uh, uh, curricular area group preparatory stage uh, for uh, coordinating the session on uh, textbooks. Uh, so, first of all, I would also like to invite uh, uh, Neil Kantji. Uh, uh, so, please take your seat. Yes, so, so, yes. So, I'm handing over uh, mic to Suniti ji. Uh, good afternoon to everyone um, and a very warm welcome for the session. So we'll be presenting five textbooks that we have developed for grade three. Uh, we have developed Veena for uh, Hindi, Santur for English, Sitar for Urdu, and uh, Maths Mela or Maths Fair in English and Ganit Mela in Hindi for Mathematics and uh, the World Around Us uh, textbooks. So in this series, first uh, book would be Veena and uh, you can ask your questions uh, uh, online through YouTube uh, or, uh, um, or uh, through the link that you are sharing, uh, that, that you are connected with us. And uh, uh, so this presentation, because it is in it is for Hindi language, it will be done in Hindi because we often uh, get requests that please do it in English. So now we are presenting the Hindi textbook. Therefore, uh, the presentation will be in Hindi. So Dr. Neil Gant, please. Dhanyavad, Ranjana Madam, Suniti Madam, Professor Suniti Sadhanwal Madam. और इस आभासी माध्यम से जुड़े हुए तमाम विद्वान और शिक्षक साथियों जैसा कि चर्चा हो चुकी है कि हम नई किताबों की दुनिया में प्रवेश करने जा रहे हैं बिना उस प्रवेश द्वार का एक हिस्सा है बिना भाग एक जिसमें जो कि हिंदी की नई पाठ्य पुस्तक है और पहले ही चर्चा हो चुकी हुई है कि ये पाठ्य पुस्तकें राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति राष्ट्रीय पाठ्यचर्या की रूपरेखा विद्यालयी शिक्षा के लिए जो तेईस में आई और जो पाठ्यक्रम हमने तैयार किए हैं इन सब को ध्यान में रखते हुए मुख्य रूप से ये किताबें तैयार की गई किताबों को तैयार करने में जैसा कि आप आवरण पृष्ठ से ही प्रारंभ कर सकते हैं मीना से कि इन किताबों के मूल में राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति में जो पहला शब्द आया है राष्ट्रीय वो तत्व मौजूद है राष्ट्रीय होने का आशय ये कि भारतीय परंपरा और संस्कृति के जो तत्व हैं वो इन किताबों में घुटे हुए हैं अलग अलग तरीके से खासकर हिंदी की किताब के आवरण पृष्ठ को आप देखें तो आवरण पृष्ठ से ही हमारी भारतीय परंपरा और संस्कृति के प्रति भाषाओं का जो जुड़ाव है खासकर भारतीय भाषाओं का वो प्रतिबिंबित होगा दूसरी बात ये कि इनके कंटेंट पर इनमें जो सामग्री मौजूद है उस सामग्री में अगर आप जाएंगे तो आपको दिखाई पड़ेगा कि इसमें हमने पंचतंत्र से लेकर चंद्रयान तक की यात्रा तय की है पंचतंत्र कहने का मतलब ये कि जो हमारी परंपरा और संस्कृति है जो हमारा समृद्ध साहित्य है वो तो इन पाठ्य पुस्तकों में आया ही है साथ ही नवीन तकनीक और वैज्ञानिक चीजें वो भी यहाँ पर मौजूद है तो शायद ही कोई आयाम है दुनिया जितनी बदली है उस बदली हुई दुनिया को भारतीय परंपरा और संस्कृति से जोड़कर ये किताबें तैयार की गई है अब इन किताबों के बारे में आपसे मैं बात करूं तो सबसे पहले आप आवरण पृष्ठ की चर्चा हो चुकी है और राष्ट्रीयता की चर्चा हो चुकी है तो इसमें मौजूद सामग्री की ओर आप देखें मौजूद सामग्री इकाई के अनुसार व्यवस्थित की गई है 
तो ये किताबें मुख्य रूप से आप देखेंगे कि इन इकाइयों पर आधारित है जिनमें पाठ्यक्रम में जो थीम है पाठ्यक्रम के जो विषय तय किए गए थे उनके अनुसार अलग अलग अध्यायों अलग अलग विधाओं को लेकर हमने इनको व्यवस्थित किया है तो ये किताबें इकाइयों में व्यवस्थित हैं और इनके साथ सुंदर चित्र आवरण रोचकता गतिविधियां ये सब इस पाठ्य पुस्तक की चाल है तो आप जैसे जैसे आगे बढ़ेंगे ये चीजें आपको अपनी पाठ्य पुस्तक में दिखाई पड़ेगी और विद्यार्थी अगर इस पाठ्य पुस्तक से होकर गुजरेंगे तो निश्चित रूप से जो लुभावने चित्र हैं रंग हैं जो पाठ्य सामग्री है प्रथम दृष्टिया उनको आकर्षित करेंगे और वो इस पाठ्य पुस्तक से जुड़ेंगे तो पहला काम होता है किसी भी पाठ्य पुस्तक से जुड़ाओ अगर एक बार आप जुड़ गए तो आगे का काम बहुत आसान हो जाता है अब मैं अपने शिक्षक मित्रों से चर्चा करना चाहूंगा कि इस पाठ्य पुस्तक का निर्माण करते हुए जिन मुख्य बिंदुओं को ध्यान में रखा गया है वो है राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति राष्ट्रीय पाठ्यचर्या की रूपरेखा दो की चर्चा हो चुकी है और निश्चित रूप से कोई भी सामग्री जब हम तैयार करते हैं तो संवैधानिक दायरों का ख्याल अवश्य रखते हैं तो संवैधानिक मूल्य हैं इनका ध्यान रखा गया है और इन सब से मिलकर आप देखेंगे कि जो दक्षताएं जो लक्ष्य और सीखने के प्रतिफल निर्धारित किए गए हैं उन्हीं के आलोक में उन्हीं की दिशा में चलते हुए इनके तमाम पाठ निर्धारित किए गए हैं इस पाठ्य पुस्तक की संरचना की ओर जैसा कि पहले चर्चा हो चुकी है कि यह इकाइयों में व्यवस्थित है ये इकाई है हमारा पर्यावरण हमारे मित्र आओ खेलें अपना अपना काम और हमारा देश तो आप देखें कि किस प्रकार पाठों को व्यवस्थित किया गया है अपने परिवेश से अपनी नजदीकी आप कहें कि अगल बगल की दुनिया से प्रारंभ कर बच्चे देश तक की यात्रा कर रहे हैं वहां तक पहुंच रहे हैं और श्रम के महत्व को भी समझ रहे हैं खेल खेल में चीजों को सीखने की कोशिश भी कर रहे हैं आप देखें तो हर इकाई में कुछ पाठ दिए गए पाठों का चयन करते हुए मुख्य रूप से ध्यान रखा गया है कि एक इकाई में एक कविता हो तो कुछ गद्य के पाठ हो कुछ रोचक सामग्री भी हो पहेलियां भी हो खेल भी हो और गतिविधियां भी हो तो इसलिए हर इकाई में आप देखेंगे कि विधाओं की विविधता का ध्यान रखा गया है एक दूसरी बात बहुभाषिकता का ध्यान रखा गया है तीसरी बात जो हमारी डायवर्सिटी है पूरे देश की भौगोलिक सांस्कृतिक उसको भी ध्यान में रखा गया है इसलिए दक्षिण से लेकर उत्तर तक पूर्व से लेकर पश्चिम तक किसी न किसी रूप में इस पाठ्य पुस्तक में आपको अभिव्यक्त हुआ मिलेगा और एक तो अलग से पाठ ही है जिसमें अलग अलग राज्यों के खान पान पहनावा पोशाक इसकी चर्चा है और उस पर आधारित कुछ अध्याय भी दिए गए हैं तो अगर आप इनको ध्यान से पढ़ेंगे तो हर बच्चे को कुछ ना कुछ अपना यहाँ पर मिलेगा हर कोई कह सकता है कि नहीं ये मेरी परंपरा और संस्कृति से जुड़ी हुई किताब है और ये सारी परंपराएं और संस्कृति जब मिलेंगी तो हमारे देश की परंपरा और संस्कृति की किताब बन जाएंगे तो इस तरह से इस प्रकार से ये किताबें व्यवस्थित की गई है अब इनके साथ ही भाषा के क्षेत्र में जो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा होता है वो भाषा के कौशल होते हैं मुख्य रूप से सुनना पढ़ना लिखना और बोलना ये सब कौशल तब बनते हैं जब समझ के साथ सोच के साथ तर्क के साथ आप अपने जीवन में अपनी विभिन्न परिस्थितियों में इसका इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं इसका प्रयोग कर सकते हैं तो जब हम इन कौशलों को समझ के साथ उपयोग में लाते हैं और यही हमारा उद्देश्य भी होता है कोई भी कविता पढ़ाते हुए कोई भी कहानी पढ़ाते हुए पाठ पढ़ाते हुए हमारा उद्देश्य ये नहीं होता है कि हम उस कविता का अर्थ सिर्फ बता दें उद्देश्य ये होता है कि उस कविता से गुजरते हुए उस पूरी प्रक्रिया को इस प्रकार की जाए कि वैसी कोई और कविता वैसी कोई और कहानी वैसा कोई और पाठ जब उसके समक्ष आए तो वो बच्चा उसको डिकोड कर सके उन्ही बिंदुओं को ध्यान में रखते हुए शब्दों को आ, संदर्भ देखकर उसका अर्थ निकाल सके व्याकरण की भी प्रत्यक्ष या अप्रत्यक्ष रूप से एक समझ विकसित कर सके तो अब आप देखें कि इसी को ध्यान में रखते हुए हमने पाठ्य पुस्तक में भाषाई कौशलों के लिए अलग अलग क्षेत्र अलग अलग स्थितियां रची हैं जैसे कि पढ़ने के लिए 
वैसे तो पूरी किताब ही पढ़ने के लिए है आप प्रथम पृष्ठ से प्रारंभ करेंगे और आखिरी पृष्ठ तक पठन ही होता है पर चूंकि हमारे यहाँ एन में भी और एन भी है पढ़ने के लिए अलग से जोर दिया गया है तो हमने ये कोशिश की है कि हर यूनिट के साथ कुछ न कुछ ऐसा जरूर सामग्री दें जो रोचक तरीके से आनंदमयी तरीके से प्रस्तुत हो और बच्चे उसके चित्र को भी देखें उसके शब्दों को भी देखें और पढ़ने का आनंद लें पढ़ने का आनंद लेने का मतलब ये कि पढ़ने के तौर तरीकों को सीखे पढ़ना सिर्फ टेक्स्ट बुक तक नहीं वो लाइब्रेरी तक जाएं, अलग अलग पाठों को भी पढ़ने का चस्का विकसित करें उन्हें एक आदत लगे कि अरे ये तो मजेदार चीज है इसको पढ़कर हम बहुत सारी चीजें सीख सकते हैं और आनंद आनंद में पढ़ना बच्चों को एक नई दुनिया की ओर ले जाएगा जो लाइब्रेरी तक की यात्रा अखबार और पत्र पत्रिकाओं तक भी उनको लेकर आता चला जाएगा इसलिए कुछ पाठ अलग से भी पढ़ने के लिए दिए गए हैं जैसे कि दोस्त के जूते एक लघु कथा है ट्रैफिक जाम गप गीत और हिंद देश के निवासी तो इस प्रकार की रचनाएं हैं जो सिर्फ पढ़ने के लिए आपके समक्ष दिए गए हैं तो पढ़ने के कौशल से संबंधित ये सारी चीजें वहां पर मौजूद हैं यहाँ तक कि आप जब अभ्यास कार्य में जाएंगे तो अभ्यास कार्य में भी पढ़ने का कोना अलग से कुछ ना कुछ दिया गया है गतिविधि के रूप में अब आप देखें कि इकाइयों में व्यवस्थित यह पाठ्य पुस्तक सारंगी भाग एक और दो की निरंतरता में है जहां हमने दो को खत्म किया था कक्षा तीन का प्रारंभ वहां और वहां से आगे करते हैं कहने का मतलब कि शब्द भंडार शब्दों से वाक्य निर्माण करना और उसको अपने सोच समझ की अभिव्यक्ति के स्तर तक ले जाने की बात सारंगी भाग तीन में आपको मिलेगी जो कि सारंगी भाग एक और भाग दो के आगे एक और महत्वपूर्ण बात कि सारे पाठों का चयन कहते हुए भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा और संस्कृति का प्रतिनिधित्व हर जगह किसी न किसी रूप में हो इसका विशिष्ट ध्यान रखा गया है इस पाठ्य पुस्तक के निर्माण में भौगोलिक सांस्कृतिक विविधता की चर्चा हो चुकी है और तकनीकी विकास को आवरण पृष्ठ पर चर्चा करते हुए ही आप जान समझ चुके हैं कि किस प्रकार पंचतंत्र से लेकर चंद्रयान तक की यात्रा इस पाठ्य पुस्तक में मौजूद है अब एक और महत्वपूर्ण बात जो शिक्षक कक्षा में लेकर जाएंगे इस किताब को वो ध्यान में रखें कि ये पूरी किताब अलग अलग कौशलों के हिसाब से विकसित की गई है तो पढ़ाते हुए या पढ़ते हुए उन कौशलों को फोकस में अवश्य रखें ध्यान में अवश्य रखें जैसे कि पढ़ने के लिए पूरी किताब है इसकी चर्चा हो चुकी है लेकिन बातचीत के लिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण होता है कि बच्चे अपनी बात कह सकें और बात कहने के दौरान कोई अवरोध ना हो हो सके तो वो अपनी मातृभाषा में भी अपनी बात को करें और कहें जो कि बहुभाषिकता की अवधारणा के अनुकूल है तो बातचीत वाला अंश जो इस किताब में आप देखेंगे कि अलग से दिया गया है और बच्चों को अवसर प्रदान किया गया है कि वो अपनी मातृभाषा में या जो कुछ भी वो सोचते हैं अपने आप को अभिव्यक्त करें तो भाषाई कौशलों के विकास के संदर्भ में आप अभ्यास और गतिविधि में जाएंगे तो पहला ही हिस्सा आपको वहां दिखाई पड़ेगा एक और बात इस शब्दों को लेकर और व्याकरण को लेकर अक्सर ये बात होती है कि व्याकरण को कैसे पढ़ाए प्रत्यक्ष तरीके से और प्रत्यक्ष तरीके से क्या उसकी परिभाषा देकर या बच्चों को खेल खेल में गतिविधि के माध्यम से या कोई और तरीका अपनाए तो इस संदर्भ में इस पाठ्य पुस्तक में जो दृष्टिकोण रखा गया है वो ये कि बच्चों को उदाहरण के माध्यम से पाठ में जहां पर जो बातें आती हैं वहां से जुड़ी हुई बात गतिविधि के रूप में देकर बगैर परिभाषा बताए हुए ये समझा दें कि ये विशेषण है ये संज्ञा है ये सर्वनाम है जैसे कि चिड़िया है तो चिड़िया के एक पाठ में आप देखेंगे बया चिड़िया की बहुत सारी विशेषताएं अब बच्चा समझ रहा है कि अरे ये तो बया चिड़िया की विशेषता है लेकिन वो नहीं जानता है कि इस शब्द को विशेषण कहते हैं तो हमने ऐसे तमाम उदाहरण दिए और ऐसे तमाम उदाहरणों के बाद आप देखेंगे कि धीरे धीरे हमने आगे चलकर विशेषण को इंट्रोड्यूस किया बताना प्रारंभ कर दिया अरे यही तो संज्ञा है यही तो सर्वनाम है यही तो विशेषण है तो उदाहरण से लेकर हमने वहां तक की यात्रा शब्दों के संदर्भ में भी हमने ऐसा किया कि अलग से शब्द का अर्थ बताने के बजाय बच्चों को अनुमान करने का अवसर दिया कि वो अनुमान करे कि क्या होगा और 
हर पाठ में हर यूनिट में कुछ नए शब्द लेकर हम आए हैं तो बच्चों का जो अपना शब्द भंडार है वहां तक तो वो है ही लेकिन हमारा काम है कि पढ़ाते हुए हम उनके शब्द भंडार की वृद्धि भी करें तो शब्द भंडार की वृद्धि के लिए हमने नए नए शब्दों का गतिविधियों के माध्यम से भी और पाठ में भी अवसर प्रदान किया है कि बच्चे नए शब्दों को संदर्भ में डिकोड करें ताकि ऐसा कभी कोई और पाठ आए तो संदर्भ देख कर भी शब्द भंडार वो अपना विकसित कर सके इंटर अप्रोच आप देखेंगे कि अंत अनुशासनात्मक दृष्टिकोण भी दिखाई पड़ेगा कई पाठों में आपको गणित के सवाल भाषा के साथ गुथे हुए मिले हैं जैसे कि कोई कहानी है तो उस कहानी में कितने पैर अब किसके कितने हैं तो वो कहानी की तरह लेकिन अब उसमें जो सवाल दिए गए हैं पीछे की तरफ वो आनंदमयी तरह से तरीके से बच्चों को गिनती भी सिखाते हैं और यही नहीं एक और दिक्कत होती है गणना के संदर्भ में आप देखेंगे कि हम रोमन स्क्रिप्ट वाली गिनती तो जानते हैं अंग्रेजी वाली पर हमारे अधिकांश बच्चे पूछते हैं कि अच्छा 86 को हिंदी में क्या कहते हैं दो को हिंदी में क्या कहते हैं तीन को थ्री को हिंदी में क्या कहते हैं तो इसलिए ऐसी गतिविधियां भी इसमें दी गई हैं कि वो रोमन के साथ मतलब अंग्रेजी के साथ साथ अंग्रेजी में जो गिनती की व्यवस्था है हिंदी में भी लिखना और पढ़ना दोनों सीखे और ये जाकर हमारे रूटेडनेस भारतीय परंपरा और संस्कृति से भी कहीं ना कहीं जुड़ जा रही है जो उसका हिस्सा आप देखेंगे तो इसके अलावा और बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जिनका जेंडर के संदर्भ में हो आर्ट इंटीग्रेशन के कला समेकन के संदर्भ में हो पर्यावरण के संदर्भ में हो इन सब को शामिल करते हुए ही ये किताब तैयार की गई है आप जब इस पाठ्य पुस्तक को पढ़ाएंगे और पाठ्य पुस्तक के प्रारंभ में ही अबाउट द बुक पाठ्य पुस्तक के बारे में जो लिखा गया है उसको भी अगर आप पढ़ेंगे तो आपकी समग्र दृष्टि पढ़ने पढ़ाने के संदर्भ में विकसित हो जाएगी तो मेरा अनुरोध है कि आप पाठ्य पुस्तक के बारे में जो लिखा गया है उसको तो पढ़ाने से पहले अवश्य पढ़ें और अपनी कक्षा में पढ़ाते हुए उसको ध्यान में रखें और उसका उपयोग भी करें अब आपके समक्ष मैं कुछ उदाहरण रखना चाहता हूं ताकि उन उदाहरणों के माध्यम से आप अपने स्क्रीन पर देखें कि किस प्रकार हम पुस्तक में पढ़ने के कौशलों को मिलकर पढ़ने के कौशलों को बातचीत को और तमाम तरह के जो कौशल हैं उनको विकसित कर सकते हैं इसके उदाहरण दिए गए हैं अब पहला ही हिस्सा है जो बातचीत के लिए जिसकी चर्चा हो चुकी है आप देखें कि एक कोना ऐसा दिया गया है इन गतिविधियों में कि बच्चा क्या सोचता है जैसे मान लीजिए किसी कहानी में मधुमक्खी कुछ सोच रही है शेर कुछ सोच रहा है गिदड़ कुछ सोच रहा है तो हमने अब उनको रिप्लेस कर दिया उनको बदल दिया और बच्चों से कहा कि अगर गौरैया से आपकी बातचीत होगी तो आप क्या सोचेंगे आप क्या कहेंगे आप क्या लिखेंगे तो ये बच्चों का हर यूनिट में हर पाठ में एक अपना कोना है जहां खुलकर वो अपनी बात कह सकते हैं बोल सकते हैं और जब वो खुलकर अपनी बात कहेंगे तो उनके कौशल भी विकसित होंगे और रचनात्मकता जिज्ञासा और कल्पना को भी एक नवीन अवसर प्राप्त होगा तो सीखने को आनंदमयी बनाने के ये तौर तरीके हैं आप देखें कि जो गतिविधियां दी गई हैं उनको इन सर्किल चाहे लड्डू हो फल हो फूल हो बच्चों को इससे बच्चे क्या होगा कि वर्तनी की शुद्धि के साथ उसको पढ़ सकेंगे कैसे पढ़ा जाता है चित्र के साथ उसको मिलाएंगे वाक्य में उसका कैसे उपयोग हो रहा है इसको भी देखेंगे और अंततः लिखने की दक्षता अपनी बात को कहने की दक्षता बोलने के साथ साथ विकसित करेंगे इसलिए आप देखें कि यहाँ पर संवाद से संबंधित साझा करने से संबंधित इस तरह की तमाम गतिविधियां दी गई है अब हमारा एक महत्वपूर्ण काम है जो हर स्तर पर हम करते ही रहते हैं वो है शब्द वाक्य निर्माण और लिखना इसकी सीमा इसकी सीमा और गुणवत्ता धीरे धीरे बढ़ती चली जाती है शब्दों से परिचय बच्चों का एक और दो में भी है लेकिन शब्दों से वाक्य का निर्माण शब्दों को जोड़कर वाक्य बनाना और सार्थक वाक्य बनाना और साथ ही अपनी समझ को अभिव्यक्त करना ये एक थोड़ा ऊपर के स्तर तो हमने यहाँ शब्द से वाक्य रचना की ओर ले जाने के लिए भी बच्चों को अवसर प्रदान किए हैं और तमाम तरह की गतिविधियां आप अपने स्क्रीन पर देख सकते हैं कि दिए गए हैं अब रंग भरने के लिए भी दिया गया है कुछ गतिविधियां ऐसी दी गई हैं जिनमें शब्दों को 
उलट दिया गया है क्रम बदल दिया गया है और फिर बच्चों से कहा गया है कि अब आप वाक्य तैयार करें बदले हुए क्रम को आगे पीछे करके उनसे शब्द बनाने के लिए भी कहा गया है कई खेल शब्दों के ऐसे दिए गए हैं जिनमें वर्तनी बच्चे सीखेंगे जैसे हमने घेरा बनाकर अलग अलग तरह की वर्तनी वाले शब्द दे दिए और बच्चे उनमें से जो ठीक वर्तनी वाले शब्द हैं उनको पहचानेंगे कई फलों के नाम दिए गए और उन फलों के नाम पर चल चल कर ही बच्चे को उस खेल से बाहर निकलना है तो अब वो फल सब्जी और तमाम में अंतर करते हुए उन पर कदम रखते हुए उस गतिविधि में बाहर आ सकता है जो आगे आपको दिखाई पड़े अब कला समेकन की जो बात हो रही थी वो आपके समक्ष है हमने आ, एक कहानी जिसमें शेर और सियार वाली बात आई है तो एक मुखौटा बनाने का तौर तरीका बच्चों को सिखाया और फिर उनको यह भी अवसर दिया कि अगर आपको शेर पसंद है तो शेर सियार पसंद है तो सियार मुखौटा बनाइए और उसका उपयोग करके संवाद बोलिए इस तरह की और भी कई गतिविधियां जगह जगह पर आपको इस किताब में मिलेगी बच्चों को चित्रकारी के भी अवसर दिए गए हैं और रंग भरने के अवसर दिए गए हैं तो बच्चों के मन में जो भी रंग है वो अपनी किताब पर भी निकालें ताकि किताब से उनको लगाव हो वो किताब अपनी अपनी लगे तो चित्र तो इतने बेहतरीन हैं और उनका अपना कोना किताब से उनके लगाव को पढ़ाएगा और किताब को पढ़ने की ओर प्रेरित करेगा आ, कुछ और भी उदाहरण आप पुस्तक से गतिविधियों के देख सकते हैं जो आपको रोचक तरीके से दिखाई पड़ेंगे कि किस तरह से ये विभाजित किए जा सकते हैं अलग अलग तरीकों में शब्द भंडार बढ़ाने के लिए भी ये हैं ये वर्तनी के लिए भी हैं ये लिंग के हिसाब से भी बच्चों को पहचान के लिए हैं और लिखने के लिए भी हैं तो ये अलग अलग गतिविधियां यहाँ पर मौजूद हैं और सबसे मजेदार हिस्सा जो इस किताब का मैं आपको मिलेगा कि आम तौर पर जिसके कारण आपको ये किताबें नई लगेंगी एक तो अपनी रूटेडनेस के कारण ये किताब नहीं लगेगी आपको आनंदमयी होने के कारण ये किताब अलग तरीके की लगेगी अलग अलग कौशलों को तो हम विकसित करते ही हैं उस पर ध्यान देते ही हैं लेकिन ये परंपरा कम रही है खासकर पाठ्य पुस्तकों में कि बच्चों के स्तर के चुटकुलों को भी इसमें चित्र सहित शामिल किया जाए तो आप देखें कि चित्र सहित कुछ चुटकुले दिए गए हैं ठहाके शीर्षक से कुछ बहुत मजेदार कहानियां दी गई हैं बुझवल और पहेलियां दिए गए हैं जो कहानी के रूप में भी हैं और सीधे सीधे पहेली के रूप में आप हर पाठ और हर इकाई के अंत में भी देखेंगे कि कुछ पहेलियां दी गई हैं पर उनके उत्तर नहीं दिए गए हैं जानबूझकर उत्तर नहीं दिए गए हैं कि बच्चे अनुमान करें कभी भी हम चम्मच से खाना खिलाने वाली बात करेंगे जो ज्ञान के लिए संघर्ष नहीं करेगा वो उसकी समझ का स्थायी हिस्सा बनेगा नहीं तो इसलिए वो प्रयास करे कोशिश करे अनुमान लगाए और अपने विद्यार्थियों के साथ बच्चों के साथ चर्चा करे टीचर के साथ घर में जाए तो हर जगह पाठ्य पुस्तक उसके साथ मौजूद रहे पहली के रूप में और इन इसी प्रकार से रीडिंग के लिए दोस्त के जूते हैं जो बहुत मजेदार है आप देखेंगे छोटी सी कहानी है जिसमें मच्छर और चीटी का संवाद है कि भाई मेरे दोस्त के लिए तुम जूते बना दो तो राजी हो जाता है कि ठीक है भाई कितने दो जूते होंगे चार जूते होंगे पर उसको नहीं मालूम था कि उसका दोस्त तो कन खजूरा है जिसके पता ने अनंत पैर होते हैं तो एक खुलासा बाद में होता है तो इस तरह की चीजें जो बच्चों की दुनिया में मजेदार होती हैं अंदाई होती है वहां पर मौजूद है जैसा कि पहले भी चर्चा हुई कि चिड़िया से बच्चे की बातचीत मुखौटा वेस्ट चीजों ऐसी चीजें जो फेंक दी जाती हैं उनसे कैसे आप अच्छी तरह की सामग्री बना सकते हैं पढ़ने लिखने के लिए बागवानी की चीजों की पहचान कैसे बच्चे करें इसके लिए दिया गया है कि उसको इन सर्किल करें तो इस तरह की तमाम चीजें जो कि खेल खेल में बच्चे सीख लें आनंद के साथ सीख लें इनका समायोजन इस पाठ्य पुस्तक में किया गया है जिसका मैं कह रहा था उदाहरण कि कैसे बच्चे बाहर निकलेंगे फल और फूल में फल सब्जी इन सब में अंतर करते हुए शब्द के रूप में शब्द खेल के रूप में आपके स्क्रीन पर यह मौजूद है आप देख सकते हैं खेल खेल में शब्दों से परिचय और जानकारी इसी तरह से वर्तनी के लिए आप गतिविधि देखें विशेषण की मैं आपसे बात कर रहा था तो विशेषण वाली बात भी आपको वहां पर दिखाई पड़ेगी आ, देखें कि लंगूर की पूछ लंबी है गौरैया की विशेषता बस की विशेषता पर कहीं हमने नहीं बताया कि ये विशेषण है अब नीचे आप देखें कि हमने कहा कि 
इस लाइन में विशेषता को पहचान कर खाली स्थानों की आप पुष्टि कर दीजिए भर दीजिए अब विशेषण की एक समझ बच्चों को बन रही है ये आप उसमें देख सकते हैं तो किस तरह से व्याकरण को पढ़ाने के लिए हमने अपना एक दृष्टिकोण अपनाया है और कैसे बच्चों को खेल खेल में और आराम से व्याकरण संबंधी चीजें सिखाई जा सकती हैं वो आपके समक्ष है तो कुल मिलाकर कहने का मतलब ये है कि बच्चों में जो भी हमने लक्ष्य तय किए हमने दक्षताएं तय की सीखने के प्रतिफल तय किए उन्हीं के अनुसार पाठों का चयन किया गया है उन्हीं के अनुसार गतिविधियां ली गई हैं अलग अलग कौशलों को विकसित करने के लिए एक एक गतिविधि टारगेटेड है उसका एक दृष्टिकोण है एक उद्देश्य है इसलिए पढ़ाते हुए आप यह ध्यान अवश्य रखें कि आप जो भी सामग्री पढ़ा रहे हैं उससे कुछ न कुछ बच्चों को सीखना है कोई ना कोई कौशल कोई ना कोई दक्षता विकसित होनी है और इसीलिए आकलन करते हुए भी आप ध्यान रखें कि आकलन आप पाठ्य पुस्तक का नहीं कर रहे जो बच्चों को जो आप सिखाते हैं शिक्षण अधिगम की प्रक्रिया में जो ग्रहण करता है बच्चा उसी का आकलन भी होता है तो ये विद्यार्थी केंद्रित हो एक तो इस उम्र में बच्चों के आकलन को बिल्कुल ही अवलोकन आधारित होना चाहिए कि बच्चों को पता भी नहीं चले और उनका आकलन जिसको आप कहते हैं रचनात्मक तरीके से वो हो जाए तो अवलोकन और गतिविधि खेल खेल में बच्चों को पता न चले और आकलन हो जाए टीचर नोट लेते चले तो वो बेहतर है और जो भी हमारे कौशल हैं उन कौशलों और उन दक्षताओं को ध्यान में रखें 360 डिग्री की बात हमेशा हम करते हैं कि बच्चों के व्यवहार में सीखने से जो बदलाव आया वो जरूर कैच हो जाए वो जरूर हम ध्यान दे दें तो इन सब को ध्यान में रखते हुए इन पाठ्य पुस्तकों का आकलन किया जा सकता है अब ये नए दृष्टिकोण से विकसित भारतीय परंपरा संस्कृति को ध्यान में रखते हुए रूटेडनेस को ध्यान में रखते हुए ये किताब बनी है और ये किताब पहली बार अपनी जमीन से जुड़ी हुई किताब है जिसमें संपूर्ण देश आनंदमयी रोचक तरीके से शामिल है तो खेल खेल में बच्चे अपने देश को भी जानेंगे वैज्ञानिक प्रगति को जानेंगे तार्किक चिंतन से जुड़ेंगे और भाषा के माध्यम से सिर्फ भाषा ही नहीं सीखेंगे एक बड़ी दुनिया के साथ जुड़ेंगे तो इस नई किताब के लिए हिंदी की नई किताब जिसका शीर्षक वीणा है आप सबको लोग को बहुत बहुत बधाई और वीणा के इस सुमधुर वाद्य यंत्र के साथ अपने विद्यार्थियों के शिक्षा निगम की प्रक्रिया में आ, आगे बढ़िए ऐसी शुभकामना धन्यवाद धन्यवाद नीलपन जी तो मैं आपको और आपकी पूरी टीम को भी बधाई देना चाहती हूँ एक सुंदर पुस्तक का निर्माण करने के लिए जो चैट बॉक्स में है मैं सीबीएसई के जो कोऑर्डिनेटर हैं उनसे भी रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी कि आप अगर कोई चैट बॉक्स में सवाल है तो आप पूछ सकती हैं लोगों के जो मैं सवाल देख पा रही हूँ उसमें ये कहा गया है कि ये कहाँ उपलब्ध है या डाउनलोड कितना ने की है तो अभी ये किताब डाउनलोड uh, के लिए एनसीईआरटी की वेबसाइट पे उपलब्ध है और थोड़े ही दिनों में आप इसकी हार्ड कॉपी बाजारों में भी प्राप्त कर पाएंगे um, एक और सवाल जो पूछा गया है वो ये कि क्या हम टेक्स्ट बुक का एसेसमेंट की बात कर रहे हैं या कॉम्पिटेंसी uh, के एसेसमेंट की बात कर रहे हैं तो नीलकंठ जी ने बहुत uh, आपको बताया खुल के बताया कि तीन डिग्री असेसमेंट की हम बात कर रहे हैं जहाँ पे होलिस्टिक असेसमेंट uh, होना है और इसके साथ ही सी बी कोऑर्डिनेटर से मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी अगर आपके अगर आप कुछ सवाल देख पा रही हैं सी बी के यूट्यूब चैनल से तो आप पूछ सकते हैं इससे पहले कि हम अगली पुस्तकों में जाएं मैम हम कंपाइल कर रहे हैं ये सारे जो क्वेश्चंस आ रहे हैं हमारे यूट्यूब में जैसे ही हम ये सारे कंपाइल कर लेते हैं हम आपको फॉरवर्ड कर देंगे अच्छा ठीक है तो फिर इसका मतलब है कि हम आ, हम ये सवालों को बाद में भी आपके साथ दे सकते हैं या हम एक सेशन कर सकते हैं जहाँ पे हम आपके आ, सवालों के उत्तर देंगे तो इसके साथ ही वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट बुक विच इज द इंग्लिश टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर ग्रेड थ्री एंड इट इज कॉल्ड संतूर एंड आई हैव विथ विथ मी माय कोलीग प्रोफेसर वर्दा एम निकाल जे हु इज अ प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन एंड आई इनवाइट हर टू प्रेजेंट द बुक प्रोफेसर वर्दा नमस्ते एंड गुड डे टू वन एंड ऑल इट्स 
it's my privilege to present before you class three santur uh, the textbook of english i would like to begin with one of my favorite phrases that is saying hello to the textbook so when we actually we have just seen it that is uploaded it's not yet in your hand but this is an opportunity for you to say hello to the textbook and when we say hello to the textbook we begin with what is called the preliminary pages or prelims for short so in the prelims we have the foreword by uh, director sir which talks about the nep the recommendations the reflections of nep in these um, textbooks not just the english ones but the other ones as well and uh, the ncf of course we also have about the book which tells about the activities the rationale for the stories the narratives the poems we also have some simple guidelines for the teachers to ensure that these are taken care of because these deal with the new approach that is being followed in these textbooks so in addition to about the book we also have notes to the teacher given at um, uh, necessary places in the textbook itself immediately after an activity where it is felt that perhaps the teachers especially the novice teachers would need some guidance on the uh, rationale for including certain activities or um, narratives in the textbook so with these words let us go to the first slide that is the structure of the textbook the english textbook for class 3 santur consists of four events e uh, units each unit has three lessons the structure of the each unit is as follows we have picture reading which is essential for developing keen observation of children children do have naturally observation they have they have an eye for detail which we adults might miss but then the picture reading would encourage them to talk about what they actually see in the picture what animals birds or insects they see do they see human beings do they see men and women boys and girls what are these doing and so on we shall be looking at some of the examples later on this picture reading is followed by a poem each uh, in each of the units the poem is related as are the prose pieces to a certain theme which uh, uh, it encompasses the questions that follow let us think deal with both factual questions related directly to the content of the poem and also to uh, think and answer which is encouraging critical thinking what would you do if you were in the narrator's place do you think you would have reacted in the same way and so on this is followed by let us do an activity this um, encompasses arts and crafts or simply uh, create creating or hand manipulation and so on let us speak as one of the uh, earlier speakers has said we aim for the practical approach and this is especially true in the case of english because in um, in this l2 or english children are often seen to be proficient in reading and writing they pass their exams but when it comes to speaking they hesitate or they make mistakes or they are less confident about speaking so the textbook provides ample opportunities for speaking in uh, various situations this is followed by let us learn which is uh, focusing on grammar but grammar in a very very unobtrusive way let us read prose uh, one is generally a story a story uh, one i remember by sudha murthy which is madhu's wish there are other stories as well and these again let us think is there and at some places if the narrative uh, if the text is too heavy we have provided chunks by interspersing questions in between to make children think critically about uh, each uh, paragraph let us learn and then followed by let us listen listening is a much neglected skill in our schools and it is essential that we as a nation develop the capacity to listen as well as to speak 
let us write and followed by let us do. Let us write involves the writing of short answer questions, uh, sometimes phrases and leading on to independently writing short sentences and uh, short paragraphs. In prose too, which could be a story or it could be a narrative, it could also be a factual passage. Again, we have the same pattern of let us think, let us speak, let us listen, let us write, let us do, followed by a project which kind of wraps up the whole unit, let us explore. And here children are encouraged to talk to their elders at home or to neighbors or to uh, helpers in society and uh, <clears throat> find out a little more about them and talk about this in the classroom in English. So the key aspects of Santur is that it is a textbook come workbook. The children are asked to engage themselves thoroughly with the textbook, to focus on the activities, to write the answers, to draw, to paint, to solve the crossword. In fact, the textbook belongs to them and they belong to the textbook, in other words. The focus is on speaking, listening, reading and writing in an integrated manner. In the foundational stage, speaking and listening where they focus and here it's all the four areas. It provides ample opportunities for learners to engage with the text and to share their input, to be creative with the replies, to share with their classmates, allowing all the learners to engage with the language in a meaningful way. So it's only by speaking, by writing, by sharing that language, all languages would develop and so is the case with L2 or English. There is in this textbook, gradual progression towards independent writing. The writing activities aim to facilitate learners to diversify their written responses and make the activities relatable for every learner. It's not that only one single answer is acceptable or is correct. There could be various answers, just as there are various answers in life itself. So reading activities are also designed to evoke responses by the learners reflecting their own understanding of the text. As mentioned earlier, we have notes for the teachers and engaging illustrations with a focus on observation skills through picture reading in each unit and incorporation of multilingualism, which we shall be looking at uh, in, the, in the forthcoming slides. So Indian knowledge system and inclusion is found very much in Santur. The Indian knowledge system is especially found in unit two, which deals with toys and games. There are, uh, there's a picture, as you can see, that would be a center spread on indigenous uh, toys. There is a text on uh, Makar Sankranti and how it is celebrated in different regions and cultures in unit three. And un in unit four, which is the last unit, students are encouraged to share stories related to the moon in their region, in their culture, and in their language. So in various activities, the students are encouraged to share phrases and terms in their mother tongue. Regarding inclusion, there are illustrations which include individuals with disability along with abled people. This reflects the former's involvement in everyday life like the latter. So this is given in a very unobtrusive way without drawing attention and certainly without showing undue pity or sympathy. Activity on sight uh, as a sense is found in the poem uh, after the poem Laddu. The activity sensitizes children about visually impaired individuals. This is the text of Sankranti, Makar Sankranti that I mentioned earlier, in which there are the various names that the same festival has across different regions. The activity to the right is about the <clears throat> Uh, how the child who is visually challenged will be uh, able to identify her favorite sweet, that is the laddu. And she says, I love laddus. So the friend is very surprised and he asks uh, her how he could pick out the laddu. So children are encouraged to think and thus become sensitized to the challenges faced by the uh, visually impaired. Assessment, a key, a key factor in uh, the field of education. For the first time in the English textbook, we have two sheets, one at the end of unit two. <coughs> Sorry. 
and one at the end of the textbook, self-assessment. And here it is the child who is the master of the ship. The child will himself or herself tick the um, corresponding uh, sentence. I can recite the poem, whether in a group or in pairs or by repeating after the teacher, all by myself. So the child will be able to uh, individually assess himself or herself. And by the end of the textbook, it could be that there is um, an improvement in the child's performance. So this assessment, of course, for teachers, there are exercises at the end of every lesson to assess the language skills of the children. But the simple self-assessment uh, sheets is a step to introduce learners to the concept of assessment. So picture reading, one example is this one about a hen and a duck who are good friends and they along with their children would like to um, visit a village fair. So the story is in pictures and how they cross the stream. It's not given explicitly how they cross the stream. The child has to make use of his or her previous knowledge, knowing that ducks can swim but hens can't. And then critical thinking, the child will have to say, uh, uh, the children will have to say on their own as to how the um, they cross. They can look at the picture. Vocabulary development is found here. The names of the young ones are there and uh, match the following and so on, which will reinforce what is seen in this picture reading. So fun with words. This is, um, this is a kind of a two-way process of thinking. If uh, some of us can recall in our own childhood that there are two actions, one with the left hand patting the head and with the right hand touching the nose. So there's two kinds of uh, thinking or cognitive activity going on. Here, the word yellow, the first word yellow is written in green color and the child has to identify the word and also the color. Looking at the word yellow, the child will have to say green and so on and so forth. So looking at the second word, B-L-U-E, the child will have to say the color, which is red, and so on. So this is uh, an attempt to interest the child at the same time leading to its cognitive development. The alphabet with which the child is already familiar in the foundational stage, fun with the alphabet is continued here with words beginning with the same letter it's not a lesson it's just one of the fun activities in which this this uh, textbook abounds so o is there the name of the child is also o and the verb is given in o and the noun at the end a box of oranges and uh, q q up quietly Ch the children will have fun reading out these sentences and identifying that the first sound of each word or almost each word is uh, of the same letter. An extension of this activity is possible where the child can be encouraged to come up with sentences of his or her own which are similar to the ones here on this page and this certainly will build on previous knowledge. Interdisciplinarity is also addressed in this textbook with the integration with the mathematics being one of the examples shown here. There are four friends, rectangle, circle, square, and a triangle. So the vocabulary of shapes is reinforced here, which is also found in the mathematics textbook. And these four friends, um, they also have, they each of them thinks that he is indispensable or he is more beautiful or so on. And then the values as to, uh, I will not tell about the lesson in too much detail. I would leave it to you as teachers to go through it when you have the hard copy and to look at it uh, uh, since it's uploaded on the NCRT website as well. But what values does the child gain from this lesson? It could be that the value that uh, we might think of might be different for what the child would ultimately narrate. Cross-cutting uh, themes and assessment also in this 
For example, there is this puppet making using a brown paper bag. We have used a brown paper bag and not plastic ones. The, the base of the bag is folded. The illustrations would make it very clear as to how to use this. And then uh, towards the end, it is shown in a transparent manner so that the placement of the hand is clearly visible. So by drawing the lips, the eyes, and the, making a kind of face with hair, perhaps of cotton thread or wool, using low cost or no cost material, manipulation uh, of the hand. Most of us think of manipulation as something else, but the original meaning of manipulation is mani, that is the hand, and uh, moving the hand, finger, and wrist in various ways to uh, to create the illusion of the puppet in the, using the paper bag. A sense of achievement, of course, will be recorded by the child either verbally or at least uh, mentally, when he or she finishes the task. We have introduced, again for the first time, a picture glossary, taking the idea from the toy pedagogy, which, uh, was, also, uh, which was also, um, which teachers have been made well aware of uh, in various regional workshops conducted by NCRT and in their own states as well. So the picture glossary here talks about some of the indigenous toys, along with the names of the places that they originated in, such as Chennapatna toys, which is from Karnataka. And we also have the various materials that are used uh, in these toys. One is, by, one is a wooden toy, one is made of soft toy, that is fur. And we also have a Vande Bharat train. So the traditional and the contemporary both find place here. Continuing the concept of Indian knowledge system, we have here the concept of the Rangoli, which most children would have seen, even if they have not actually drawn the Rangoli. In Mridang, in class two, we have the joining the dots to make a Rangoli. And here we have a slightly different kind of one, which is found in South India mainly, that is they go uh, they encircle the dot and create a pattern. So this is again um, a task which is aimed for cognitive development as well as it uh, contributes to the aesthetic appreciation of uh, the, the children. In fact, there are different ways in which these three dots could be encircled or they could be joined. So there's an entire philosophy behind this that you make your own destiny, even though the dots are there, given by God or some higher power, it is you who choose which ones to join and which ones to not. Going beyond the text, speaking opportunities are aplenty in this textbook. There is a lesson about the sun, the theme is the sky, and imagine a day when the sun doesn't come out. Suppose one day the sun will not come, talk about how this day would be. So this is the going and welcoming the child into the realm of imagination. Talking to your elders at home, find out what games they played when they were young. Learn about any game that they used to play and share with your friends in small groups. So this is talking to the elders. It need not necessarily be in English. It could be in the mother tongue. Involving elders and the community. Finding out what games they used to play when they were young. So. Uh, it could be that they played out in the open and the children nowadays are restricted. Even if they go to the park, they're restricted. They are not allowed to talk to strangers and so on and so forth. And there, they did they have the minimum equipment? Did they have any equipment at all? So this is, uh, there could be games which are long forgotten. It would bring a smile to the elder's face and certainly to the younger ones as well. Madhu's Wish, this story which I referred to earlier, it's a folktale by uh, the well-known author Sudhamurti. There is an element of magic in this, as in most folktales. We do have the element of magic where a character, an old man, an old woman or uh, some saintly figure grants a wish. And here Madhu wishes for many, many kinds of eatables and then he realizes the importance of water. So it's not just about greed or about the conquering of greed. It is about thinking it through, thinking about an action, any action, thinking it through before making the wish in this case. 
the unit four, the last part, ends with the Chandrayaan. It's a misconception that Chandrayaan is uh, too high a concept and cannot be really uh, narrated or cannot be readily understood by uh, child of class three. The lesson here is simplified. The vocabulary is age appropriate. The narrative is interesting. And so Chandrayaan comes alive to these young children who already have seen it or heard about it. They have heard their parents talk about it. They may have seen some clippings on TV as well. And it is an achievement and it contributes to pride in the nation. The activities that uh, follow also reinforce the concept. So I hope that the textbook, uh, with these glimpses of the textbook, it will give you a fair idea about what this textbook is about. And uh, as they say, that um, ships look and are, ships are safe in the harbor, but that's not where they are meant to be. So textbooks are brought out by us, printed by uh, us, but that's not their place. It needs to be out there in the open, and we need you to steer these in safe waters. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Professor Varda. I also I congratulate you and your team for this book and a lot of appreciation coming through uh, from the viewers also. They uh, particularly uh, about integrating IKs, developing that picture, um, glossary and self-assessment, all the new things, a lot of appreciation coming in and I also join the teachers in appreciating the textbook. So I will just take few questions which are <clears throat> which we have noted down from the from the YouTube. So uh, are these books for this uh, current academic year? Yes, these books are for current academic years, uh, current academic year. Uh, so somebody is saying that uh, uh, bringing new textbook at grade three will have a negative impact. So I just want to inform you that uh, last year we have already uh, brought out the textbooks for grade one and two this year for grade three and we'll, we are working and we'll uh, slowly also launch grade four and five in uh, coming years so um, and i i also understand that uh, many of the cbsc schools do not have these ncrt books but still uh, i urge all of you to please read through these books to understand how we have uh, tried to uh, incorporate the um, the recommendations of NEP 2020 and NCFFS, uh, uh, NCF uh, school education. And uh, so, so some, somebody is also asking what kind of activities, kis tarah ki activity honi chahiye child development mein, to jis tarah ki activities aap humari kitabon mein dekh rahe hain, usi tarah ki activities honi chahiye, hum ensure karte hain ki ye age appropriate ho, और बच्चे के लेवल की हो और जो जो हम सिखाना चाहते हैं बच्चों को वो खेल खेल में एक्सपीरियंशियल लर्निंग के द्वारा बच्चे सीखें तो जिस तरह की गतिविधियां आप देख रहे हैं इन किताबों में उसी तरह की गतिविधियां उसमें होनी चाहिए तो ये इस तरह से आई थिंक ये वी दिस क्वेश्चंस फॉर इंग्लिश टेक्स्ट बुक एंड एज आई सेड वी विल टेक मोर क्वेश्चंस इन कमिंग डेज इफ यू हैव एनी मोर क्वेरीज ऑन दिस एंड विद दैट वी गो टू द थर्ड टेक्स्ट बुक ऑफ लैंग्वेज व्हिच इज उर्दू एंड उर्दू सो मेनी टाइम्स वी गेट अ क्वेरीज आर वी स्टार्टिंग उर्दू आल्सो सो इफ यू आर नॉट रियली टेकिंग इफ यू डोंट हैव उर्दू इन योर स्कूल्स यू नीड नॉट वरी अबाउट इट बट देयर आर स्कूल्स हु टेक उर्दू एज द फर्स्ट हु ऑफर उर्दू एज द फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज फ्रॉम ग्रेट थ्री ऑनवर्ड्स सो दिस बुक इज मेंट टू बी फॉर दोज टीचर्स हु यूज उर्दू टेक्स्ट बुक सो विद दैट आई इनवाइट प्रोफेसर चमन आरा खान हु इज द कोऑर्डिनेटर फॉर द उर्दू टेक्स्ट बुक एंड शी इज ऑल्सो शी इज अ प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लैंग्वेज सो आपका स्वागत है चमन आरा जी उर्दू की किताब शुक्रिया सितार के बारे में बताने के लिए सो मेरा आदाब और जैसा कि अभी आपने हिंदी और इंग्लिश की किताबों के बारे में वरदा वरदा मोहन निखाल जी और नीलकंठ जी से सुना तो हमने भी जो उर्दू की किताब बनाई है उसमें एन और एन 2020 के तनाजुर को मलूज रखकर हमने इस किताब को बनाया है और जैसा कि बताया गया है कि इसमें जो ये किताब का नाम सितार है और इसके कवर पे से ही आपको ये लग जाएगा कि रूटेड इंडियननेस जो है इसमें हमारा कल्चर जो है उसमें नजर आ रहा है 
और इसके अलावा जो इस किताब की खसूसियत है सबसे पहले तो मैं ये बताना चाहूंगी कि ये किताबें ये किताब जो है दर्जी किताब हमारी अः सितार इसमें भी अः थीम और इकाइयों को मद्देनजर रखा गया है यूनिट बनाए गए हैं जिसमें पहला यूनिट खानदान है दूसरा जो है वो कौमी एक जैती है तीसरा हमारा माहौल है चौथा हमारी तहजीब है और पांचवा हमारा जो है वो सेहत और गजा इनको लेकर है तो हमने इसमें लर्निंग आउटकम करिकुलर गोल और जो रिसोर्स हैं उनको और पैडागोजिकल प्रोसेस और इसके अलावा असमेंट पर भी इस तरह की एक्टिविटीज दी हैं जिसको आपको करने में खासी आसानी होगी अब ये नई दर्जी किताब सितार जो है हिस्सा एक की जो खसूसियात हैं जो अभी मैंने बताया कि कौमी तालीमी पॉलिसी 2020 ट्वेंटी कौमी दर्जियात का खाका बरए इब्तदाई सतह एन सी एफ एस ई के तनाजुर को महदूज रखकर बनाया गया है और ये किताब तीसरी जमात के तालब इलमों को उर्दू बहसीत यानी उर्दू जो है बहसीत मादरी जबान पढ़ाने के यानी फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज की हैसियत से पढ़ाई जाती है उर्दू के बारे में आपको बता दूँ कि उर्दू जो है तीन हैसियतों से पूरे हिंदुस्तान में पढ़ाई जाती है फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज सेकेंड लैंग्वेज एंड थर्ड लैंग्वेज की हैसियत तो ये जो है ये मादरी जबान यानी फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज की हैसियत से जिन बच्चों की मादरी जबान उर्दू है उनके लिए ये किताब है दूसरा है कि ये दसी किताब जो है जो हमारे कॉन्सेप्ट हैं ये कहा जाता है कि भाई अगर हम किसी को कुछ लर्निंग करा रहे हैं तो हमारा जोर जो है उसकी बुनियाद पर होना चाहिए कॉन्सेप्ट पर होना चाहिए और अगर हम कॉन्सेप्ट उसकी समझ में आ जाता है बच्चे की तो वो आगे की सब चीज़ें भी सीख लेता है इसी तरह से उनकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग है यानी फहम है और क्रिटिकल स्किल है तनकीदी सोच है हमारी क्रिएटिविटी है और हमारी वैल्यूज और इन पर जो है खास तवज्जो जो है वो दी गई है इसी तरह से कसीर लिसानियत जिसको मल्टीलिंगलिटी कहते हैं और इंक्लूजन को भी मद्देनजर रखा गया है ऐसे ही जेंडर को लिया गया है सही तहजीबी जो एक व्यवस्थगी होती है रूटेड इंडियननेस इसको भी मद्देनजर रखा गया है किताब को पांच यूनिट में जैसा कि मैंने बताया था तकसीम किया गया है वो हमने आपको बताई दी अब इस किताब में जो इसबाक हैं यानी लेसन हैं उनकी मजमू तादाद है पंद्रह और इनमें पांच नज़में हैं कहानियां हैं और एक सफ़रनामा भी लिया गया है ट्रेवलॉग और इसके अलावा चार मजामी हैं जो कि मुख्तलिफ शख्सियात पर सेहत पर खेल कूद और कौमी जाती हिंदुस्तानी इलमी निज़ाम इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम को उर्दू में हिंदुस्तानी इलमी निज़ाम कहा जाता है फितरत और माहौलियात को भी इस पर भी मबनी मवाद को या मत को लिया गया है तलबा की जो जहनी नशो नुमा के लिए दूसरे मजामी हैं जैसे आर्ट है साइंस है और सोशल साइंस वगैरह से भी एक बाहमी रब पैदा करने की कोशिश की गई है ताकि बच्चे आसपास के माहौल में जो चीज़ें हैं उनको बसानी सीख सकें इसके अलावा इसमें जैसे कि हिंदी की किताब में चुटकले लतीफे और पहेलियां भी इसमें दी गई हैं जो कि बच्चों को इंटरेस्ट और दिलचस्पी पैदा करने के लिए इसबाक के इंतखब जो किया गया था उसमें इस बात का भी ख्याल रखा गया था कि इससे तफीमी और तखलीकी सलाहियतें यानी क्रिएटिविटी की सलाहियत भी और तफीमी जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग की सलाहियत भी उसमें भी इजाफा हो और इसमें भी आ, कहानियों के जरिए और इसके जरिए लर्निंग आउटकम बेस्ड जो है हमारी जो स्किल्स हैं उनको मद्देनजर रखते हुए इसबाक का इंतखब किया गया है इसमें ये कहानियां हैं इन कहानियों में मॉरल वैल्यूज जैसे पहली कहानी है तो इसमें भी आम की गुटली इसमें भी कई वैल्यूज जो है होती गई हैं जो खानदान में एक आपसी मोहब्बत और अखलाक और मॉरल वैल्यूज को और इसके अलावा इसमें हेल्थ एंड हाइजीन को भी जो है मद्देनजर रखा गया है ऐसे ही इधर ये देखिए पढ़िए और समझिए के तहत इसमें हमने जो मुश्किल लफ्ज हैं उनको जो हेडिंग दी है यानी पढ़ना है और समझना है तो उसको लिया है इसके बाद नीचे जो दिया है सोचिए और बताइए यानी इसको सोचना है और बताना है यानी जबानी इजहार पर भी है सुनना बोलना पढ़ना लिखना इन सबको मद्देनजर रखते हुए चीजों को लिया है लेकिन समझ के साथ सुनना पढ़ना लिखना तो ये सोचिए और बताइए के तहत जो सवाल आते हैं 
वो दिए गए हैं ऐसे ही ये देखिए कुछ एक्टिविटीज है जो कि इसमें कुछ करने के लिए भी दिया गया है कहीं इनको कुछ बयान दिए गए हैं कुछ जुमले दिए गए हैं जिसमें उस बच्चे को पढ़कर समझकर सही और गलत जो है वो बताना है ऐसे ही नीचे की जो एक्सरसाइज है उसमें ये दिया गया है कि कोई दो लफ्ज दे दिए गए हैं और उन दो लफ्जों को फहम करके यानी समझ कर वो जो है इस खाली जगह में भरेगा इसी तरह से ये देखिए इसमें फल हैं इन फलों को जो है एक मिसाल दे दी गई है हर्फ जोड़े गए हैं जैसे इसमें है आम तो आम में कौन कौन से हर्फ आएंगे तो एक मिसाल दे दी गई है उस तह, उस मिसाल के तहत बच्चे जो हैं और जितनी भी हमारे फल हैं या फूल हैं उनकी शिनाख्त कर सकेंगे इसी तरह ये नज्मे हैं कौमी एकजाति पे नज्म है भारत प्यारा इसमें भी अब देखिए कोई भी नज्म जब बच्चों को पढ़ाई जाती है तो पहले तो तस्वीर जो है वो उसको जो है अपनी तरफ अपनी जानब खींचती हैं इसमें देखिए सारा जो है वो किस तरह की तस्वीर बनाई गई है पहले तो बच्चों को जो है तस्वीर पे नजर पड़ती है उसे भी पढ़ने और समझने की कोशिश करते हैं और उसके बाद जब नज्म को पढ़ा जाता है तो उसको जो है वो ये नहीं कि सिर्फ एक नज्म ही पढ़ा दी हमने ये प्यारा भारत इसके अलावा भी इस मौजू से रिलेटेड बहुत सारी नज्में आपको मिल जाएंगी तो टीचर का यहाँ पर ये रोल है कि बच्चों को जो है वो ये कहा जाए कि भी इसके अलावा भी और नज्में हैं जो आप लाइब्रेरी से तलाश करके उनको पढ़ सकते हैं या उसको आप लेकर आए तो इसमें पढ़ना और लिखना वो भी दिया गया है तो पढ़ने के लिए भी कुछ चीजें दी गई है ऐसे ही देख लीजिए इसमें ये पहली है जो नीचे दी गई है ऐसे ही और भी जो एक्सरसाइजेस हैं उन सब में इन्हीं सब बातों को ध्यान में रखा गया है कि तलबा जो है जो हमारे तलब इम है इन चीजों को समझे और समझने के बाद उसको खुद करके देखें कुछ उसमें क्रिएटिविटी पर भी हमने लिया है जैसे यही है इसमें खाली जगह छोड़ी गई है और इसमें बच्चों से ये कहा है कि आप जो कुछ भी मतलब एक और कहानी है इसके अंदर कहानी के अंदर ये देखिए कश्मीर है कश्मीर का एक सफरनामा सालाबिद हुसैन का लिखा हुआ है जिसमें कश्मीर के सारे जो जहाँ जहाँ वो कहीं उन सब का जिक्र है इसके अलावा हमने एक पैराग्राफ और दिया कि कश्मीर का कल्चर क्या है उसमें किस तरह के खाने रस्म व रिवाज रहन सहन कैसा है उन सबको लिया गया है तो आप अपनी क्लास में जब कश्मीर पर पढ़ाएंगे मैं पैडागोजी की बात कर रही हूँ तरीके कार खासी अहमियत रखता है किसी भी कहानी को नज्म को सफरनामे को या किसी भी मजमून को पढ़ाने के लिए तो मेरी जो इस है उनसे यही गुजारिश है कि आप लोग आई का इस्तेमाल करके भी कोई फिल्म या कोई ऑडियो जो कि आप YouTube पर या कहीं से भी लेकर उन तलबा को क्लास में दिखा सकते हैं ताकि कश्मीर के कल्चर के बारे में और कश्मीर के बारे में और जानकारी हासिल कर सकें ऐसे ही इसमें ये एक्सरसाइजेस दी गई हैं इसमें भी इन सब बातों का ध्यान रखा गया है अब ये नज्म है बरसात पर तो इसमें भी बरसात के मौसम के पर पूरी नज्म है और इस्माइल वेरिटी की नज्म है जो कि बहुत मशहूर नज्म है तो उस नज्म को दिया है उसमें सब बच्चे जो हैं वो देख रहे हैं तो इंक्लूजन को भी इसमें मद्देनजर रखा गया है सिर्फ यही नहीं कि हमने इसमें कुछ एक्सरसाइज दिए बल्कि हमारे जो लस्ट्रेशन है उसमें भी आपको इंक्लूजन जो है वो नजर आ जाएगा ऐसी कुछ कहानियां लोक कहानियां भी हैं इसमें और खेलों पर भी है जैसे अब ये लोक कहानियाँ ये भलाई के नाम से है जिसमें ईमानदारी पर सारा दिया गया है ऐसे ही अगली कहानी अगला जो है वो हमारा मजमून है फुटबॉल पर खेलों पर तो खेलों में खेलों को कहा जाता है कि भाई खेल को खेल के जज्बे से ही खेलना चाहिए तो फुटबॉल मैच को किस तरह से लड़के लड़कियाँ जो है खेल रहे हैं इसमें दोनों की तस्वीर हमने दी है ये रहा और कौन सा खेल आपको पसंद है और क्यों पसंद है उसके बारे में भी लिखने के लिए दिया गया है ताकि बच्चे अपनी अप, अपने ख्याल का इजहार जो है इसमें कर सकें फिर कुछ जो है ये ईद पर है तो ईद एक त्यौहार है तो इस त्यौहार पर जो है क्या क्या होता है और कैसे लोग जो हैं वो तो तस्वीरों के जरिए ही जाहिर हो रहा है और ऐसे ही ये देखे अब जैसे बच्चों को ईद पर ईद ही मिलती है तो हमने एक सवाल इसमें ये भी दिया लिखने के लिए कि आपको जो ईदी मिलती है उसमें आप उसका आप क्या क्या करते हैं 
उसमें हमने ये नहीं कहा कि आप क्या खरीदते हैं बल्कि क्या क्या करते हैं तो बच्चों के जहन में जो भी होगा वो उसको लिखेंगे तो इस तरह से उनकी क्रिएटिविटी जो है कि वो किस तरह से लिखेंगे नेक्स्ट अब ये जो है कल्पना चावला पर एक उसको कहानी को डेवलप किया गया था सितारों से आगे तो इसमें भी कल्पना चावला के उस तवस से एक बच्ची है हिना वो भी कहती है कि मैं भी स्पेस में जाऊंगी वैसे ही कल्पना चावला की तरह से मैं भी दुनिया में स्पेस की दुनिया में या खला की दुनिया में एक नाम पैदा करूंगी तो इसी तरह और भी है ये सब एक्सरसाइजेस वगैरह और असेसमेंट की बात मैं ये करना चाहूंगी आप लोगों से कि जब आप पढ़ा रहे हैं तो दौरान तदरीस यानी पढ़ाने के दौरान ही आप असेसमेंट करिए जो कि इनकी स्किल्स हैं सुनना है बोलना है पढ़ना है लिखना है उसके तहत कुछ ऐसे एक्टिविटीज क्लास में करवाइए जो इसमें सब बच्चों की शमूलियत हो सारे बच्चे उसमें शामिल हो और एक चीज और एक कि हर बच्चे पर पर्दन पर्दन हमको ये देखना है कि कौन बच्चा लिखने में कमजोर है कौन पढ़ने में कमजोर है और उसी के लिहाज से अदर एक्टिविटीज जो है हमको करानी चाहिए तो असेसमेंट जो है वो खासी अहमियत रखता है नेक्स्ट अब ये है म्यूजियम की सैर जिसमें ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम के बारे में बताया गया है कि स्कूल टीचर उनको म्यूजियम की सैर के लिए ले जाती है जो कि ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम पर है तो वहाँ जाकर बच्चों को वो बच्चे सवाल करते हैं और टीचर उनके बारे में अब ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम के बारे में बताती तो ये एक पर्सनैलिटी है इसको इस तरह से दिया गया है ऐसी इसमें चुटकले और पहले दी गई और सबसे अहम बात देखिए इसमें कुछ साजा के लिए टीचर्स के लिए कुछ निर्देश दिए गए हैं वो निर्देश तो सजेस्टेड हैं आप तो वैसे ही जो है सब बीएड एड करे हुए हैं इतने सालों से पढ़ा रहे हैं लेकिन क्योंकि किताब नई अप्रोच से बनी है तो इसलिए इसमें हमने कुछ निर्देश जो हैं वो दे दिए हैं तो उनको भी पढ़ लें और किताब के बारे में जरूर पढ़ें जो शुरू में दिया गया है कि इस किताब में हमने क्या क्या चीजों को मलूज रखा है और कैसे इस किताब को बनाया है नेक्स्ट इसके अलावा कुछ चीजें हमने जो है सिर्फ पढ़ने की नीति है सिर्फ यही नहीं वो किताब तक ही महदूद रहे बच्चे सिर्फ किताबी को पढ़ लें रटने पे जोर नहीं देना है या एग्जाम में इम्तहान का कुछ याद करके और आगे क्लास में जाएं बल्कि कुछ चीजें ऐसी भी दी हैं जो कि बच्चे पढ़े हैं जिसमें एक कहानी है ये फूल कुमारी और दो नजमे है ये कहानी फूल कुमारी है इसी तरह से एक हमारी एक तस्वीरी कहानी भी है जिसमे उन बच्चों के लिए जो के सुन और बोल नहीं सकते वो लोग इस तस्वीरी कहानी के लिए जरिए देखेंगे तो मैं यही उम्मीद करती हूँ कि जब भी आप इस किताब को ये किताब हमारी अपलोड हो गई है वेबसाइट पर एन की तो वहाँ से भी ले सकते हैं और कुछ दिन में ये किताब आपके रूबरू होगी और किताब छप के आने वाली है तो जब किताब को आप इस किताब का इस्तेमाल करेंगे या इस किताब को पढ़ाएंगे तो किताब के बारे में मेरी आपसे गुजारिश है कि उसको जरूर पढ़ लीजिए जब उसको पढ़ेंगे तो सारी चीजें आपके जहन में वाजे हो जाती हो जाएंगी तो मैं उम्मीद करती हूँ कि ये किताब सितार हिस्सा वन आपको पसंद आएगी और आपके जो भी मशवरे हो और जो भी सलाह हो वो आप हमें लिख कर भेज सकते हैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया शुक्रिया जमन आरा जी आपको और आपकी टीम को भी बहुत बधाई और जनरली एक अप्रिसिएशन है कि आप लोगों का सेशन बहुत अच्छा है टीचर्स की तरफ से और मैं आपको एक बार फिर से बताना चाहूंगी कि ये ऑल ऑफ दीज बुक्स आर अपलोडेड इन द एनसीईआरटी वेबसाइट एंड कैन आई रिक्वेस्ट अवर टेक्निकल पर्सन टू प्लीज शेयर द लिंक सो हियर दिस इज वेयर यू हैव टू गो एनसीईआरटी टेक्स्ट बुक पी डी एफ देन सेलेक्ट द क्लास दैट यू वॉन्ट द टेक्सट बुक्स एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट वी ऑलरेडी हैव टेक्सट बुक्स फॉर ग्रेड वन टू एंड थ्री अपलोडेड so if it is urdu yes so uh, yeah so select the book title we have been telling you it is sitar and then uh, you can download the books like this yeah. so similarly for english hindi mathematics um, and urdu you can download we will very shortly will be uploading the world around us that we are calling evs now and will be shortly uploading those books so you can access these books you can see the soft copy here uh, chapter by chapter you can download and you can also read through these textbooks similarly for english textbook which is santur so you can yeah
So thank you so much. And with that, we move to the uh, next textbook, which is again uh, what we were calling as EVS is now called the world around us. And with me is Dr. Romila Soni, who is uh, uh, Dr. Romila Bhatnagar, who is the coordinator of this uh, textbook. And uh, so uh, I, she is she is uh, an associate professor in the Department of Elementary Education and. Uh, uh, welcome, Dr. Ramila, and I invite you to present the book on the world around us. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Suniti ji. Uh, abhi tak aapne uh, Angrezi, Hindi, aur Urdu ki pustako ke baare mein jana. To although Suniti ji aapko bata, bata chuki ki ab aap jaanenge the world around us ke baare mein. To aapko kya lagta hai ye kitab ya pustak kya navinta lekar aayegi? Is pustak mein kya hoga? अगर आप स्वयं इसको सोचना शुरू करें तो आप पाएंगे कि आपने भी साइंटिफिक टेम्पर का इस्तेमाल करना शुरू कर दिया तो क्या ये बात हम शिक्षकों के साथ नहीं शुरू होती कि अगर हम भी ये सोचें सो स्टार्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट व्हाट दिस बुक द वर्ल्ड अराउंड अस हैज for all of us what is the treasure hidden in this yes of course you can see this now as suniti ji said that now we are calling it the world around us you must be thinking that before you put a question on that why it is the world around us yes start thinking it is more broader it is based on nep 2020 vision as you can see on the screen national education policy 2020 and yes you have read about national curriculum framework for school education 2023 that emphasize the importance of integrating a holistic and multidisciplinary interdisciplinary approach to learning about the world around us so the child starts thinking about natural physical and social world which is just around her means the world begins just around her so why not talk about the world around us and the child feels that connection when we give such kind of a title knowing the world exploring the world around us so both these documents which everybody knows about it nep 2020 and ncfse that both the documents advocate experimental learning of course you must be doing it earlier also but now this these documents focuses more on allowing the child to explore to investigate to discover and to experiment on their own of course with the teacher's supervision and not just as ornamental things we need to bring those things in the classrooms where the child feel that joy that yes i can do it i am doing it and bring that thrill of doing on their own and this is very important for the preparatory stage curriculum because when we give the child that freedom within the set limits the children starts owning that the children starts enjoying what they are reading and they do want to come to the school because every day they find something new happening in the classroom where the teacher gives the freedom to the child to explore to know the world around them so that connections need to be made by the teacher by all the adults who are concerned with the children so what is the nature of the curricular area which we say the world around us and meanwhile you must be wondering we are talking about the world around us we are talking about the nature of the curricular area what could be or what should be the title of this beautiful interesting new textbook which we are calling textbook come activity book 
So the moment you call it textbook come activatable, children feel that thrill, this yes, I'm going to do something in this book. So start thinking that is an estimation skill and a guessing skill on your part. What could be the title of this book that I'm going to tell at the end of this? Meanwhile, that's a mystery for you. So it is an interdisciplinary curricular area. As all of you know, that weaves various disciplines to provide a comprehensive understanding of our environment. As I said earlier also, it includes physical, natural, social, and yes, we have added Indian cultural rootedness so that the child connects with it and every child feels that, yes, this is my book. This book is talking about my, like what the things around himself or herself the child finds. So the nature, when we call uh, the approach of this curricular area involves connecting concepts from different subjects as the interdisciplinary uh, term itself talks about science, geography, history, and even art to explore the topics related to the world around us. So we can see that the child finds all these things in one interesting textbook come activity book and he gets the child gets prepared for the formal learning in the higher classes. So this, in short, prepares the child for the later learning. So what are the key aspects of TWAU book, The World Around Us? That's what we call it, TWAU. It enables the child to discover, explore the world around them. We keep on talking about exploring the things around the child. So the child finds that integration of science, social science, and environmental education, which we call a broader view of TWAU, rooted in the local context of the child. So we began from the local context of the child, as I said, the child feels and that, yes, this belongs to me. And the child can feel that bonding and connections with the book. And yes, it awakens the sense of wonder about living world. I'm going to give you some glimpses of uh, the chapter, which you find that the sense of wonder is there in the chapters. What is this? How it happened? What would happen if this will happen? So it gives the child a feeling of a wonder. Have you ever wondered about what would happen if this would happen? Such kind of a thing. So the child has a curiosity. And we as teachers need to nurture that curiosity through these activities. The key, another key aspect of this book is understand the interdependence within the natural world of which humans are part. And this indirectly helps the children to know and to uh, develop a kind of sensitivity toward, towards the living things around the child. So indirectly, the values, the dispositions are a part of all these chapters. And yes, as all of you know, like child is the center of learning. So it is not a kind of a prescriptive chapters. It is where the child feels that, yes, I am doing this. And everything, whatever is written, is around the child. That is the beauty of the book. So let's see the structure of the TWAU textbook come activity book. As you can see on the slide, there are total four units. Unit 1, Unit 3, Unit unit 2, Unit 3, and Unit 4. So every unit has three chapters, as you can see on the slide. 
Unit one is family and friends, where very beautifully we try to bring many concepts and skills. What Anuragji was also talking in the morning, like twenty first century skills, staying together. I'm not talking about in details about each chapter because I just want to uh, keep some kind of a mystery also for you when you will see this beautiful book uploaded on the uh, NCRT website. Going to the Mela, celebrating festivals. So all these three chapters, as you can see, the unit itself talks about, talks about people. So it also talks about community helpers. It also talk about safety rules. It also talks about some plants and flowers and some Indian traditional festivals. And it also develop a awareness among all the children uh, to respect other children's culture and know about their festivals. You need to life around us. So as you can see, getting to know about plants around us, getting to know about animals and how plants and animals are dependent on each other. And the sixth chapter talks about living in harmony where plants, animals and humans, how they all are interdependent and dependent on each other. Uh, it was depict, it is depicted uh, through lots of activities and lots of discussion, exploration activity where the children are doing in, in uh, investigation, experimentation under the supervision of uh, caring adults. And then there is unit three, gifts of nature. And as well, you can understand that how we need to conserve that gift of nature. Uh, that is also hidden in the chapter, like water is our life, water is precious. So through uh, like uh, narratives, picture reading, stories and discussion uh, activities, we are taking uh, these uh, each of the chapters uh, and inbuilt assessment is also there. And then food we eat where uh, different Indian traditional cuisines are being explored and uh, it gets the children connected and uh, uh, also helps uh, and encourage children to respect the other culture and uh, other friends food they eat, staying happy and healthy. Uh, so values are there. Unit four talks about things around us. So uh, you can see that uh, there is a balance uh, of uh, all the subjects uh, and uh, we are encouraging and enhancing that scientific temper through all these simple, uh, simply written chapters. So this world of thing uh, where we are talking about what are the things and metals and uh, materials the children find around them, making things. So other people talked about toy based pedagogy. So uh, how can we left behind? So we also talk about making things using uh, creativity and all doable things by the children taking charge of the waste. Like we are talking about biodegradable and other kind of a waste. But at the same time, we are encouraging and helping children to take the responsibility of how they are supposed to take care of their environment and uh, keep that uh, clean. So some of the salient features of TWAU book is uh, it is written in a very simple language. Even if we find some new vocab in that, uh, we are uh, doing it from the point of view that children are also going to learn some new vocabulary uh, and short sentences, freedom and scope for contextualization. As I keep on saying that it's a local context has been given emphasis. As I said that every chapter starts with visuals and uh, that is connected with the, how our culture looks in India and icons used to denote the specific activity. Like if there is a discussion, there is a discussion activity. If there is a writing, so the child also connect with that kind of a sign reading and inbuilt assessment that is reflection of children rather than the description of content. 
That's why we say after a kind of a narrative or interactive dialogue, we do ask some kind of a interactive questions that shows a self assessment of the child. So this is the way this is the reason we say it is inbuilt assessment. What do you think about? So the open ended question. So when the children answer that, that gives a feedback to the teachers, you know, like uh, and a teacher also get uh, uh, are able to know that how the children are progressing in that particular concept and skills uh, and variety in activities and task. So some of the more salient features of TWAU is uh, there is a scope for active participation. It is not that a teacher is saying and children are doing. Uh, there is a scope that all children are involved. So there is a scope for individual activity, small group activity and a large group activity. So uh, ultimately and eventually you get a scope for inbuilt assessment, how an individual child is doing, how a small group is performing, how they are performing and showing a collaborative skills in small group activities and during a large group activity, how uh, they are developing again the collaboration and waiting for their own turns and positive learning outcomes that NCFSE also talks about. So there is a discussion, there is a written work, there is a creative expression. So we have also given at certain places the role play. So that also give a kind of a, uh, uh, again the assessment and a performance based assessment like uh, uh, when the children uh, perform a role play or do a kind of a interviewing each other. So it will uh, help the teacher to know uh, their understanding, how much they have grasped. So make and do, as I said, collaborative learning is there. An emphasis on TWAU processes and skills like scientific temper, reasoning, observation, noticing things in the environment, problem solving, critical thinking skills and creativity. So this has been uh, given importance throughout all the units in, in all the chapters and then uh, unit style or a structure. As I was also uh, said in the beginning also, each chapter features an interactive dialogue, begins with a visual, narrative, or picture reading, or a small story related to the concepts. And sometimes a child himself or herself is a sutradhar or a narrator and talking about a story. So the child gets a feeling that, oh, I am reading that story and the story belongs to me. So these stories or dialogue serves in an engaging narratives. Uh, as I said, you know, like the children get connected with the subject matter on the personal level and it enhances their curiosity. For example, uh, we have one uh, chapter getting to know the plants uh, in the un uh, unit two. There is an interactive dialogue between the characters where they are talking about exploring a garden, what is there in the garden, what type of flowers are there, what are the colors of the flowers and whether do they find th these flowers in their city uh, and uh, discovering different types of plants. So they themselves are talking about the plants and parts of the plants and then we have given certain kind of uh, activities. So uh, plants also need care that was also given importance in this chapter. So how TWAU promotes meaningful and engaged learning? Uh, it allows children to think whether we offer discussion questions, whether we offer open-ended thinking skill questions, or we incorporate their unique ideas and strengths to strengthen the chapter activity. So we tried in between open-ended questions also, we tried thinking activities and uh, discussion activities in between the paras and connect and place learning that is relevant to their child, uh, to their daily lives. As we keep on saying these things again and again, the term TWAU itself talks about that we need to connect it with their 
daily real life. So encourage children to make connections across other areas of learning. This I said in the beginning as well. So examples from the book, let's have a glimpse. It focuses on discovery and exploration. You must be wondering that why we are focusing on these two words, discovery and exploration. So that is what TWAU is all about. And yes, uh, we are not focusing on any kind of a rote memorization. We are focusing and all the chapters are based on like uh, competency based and uh, we, we tried our best that it awakened some kind of a curiosity among children uh, that they found the living world around them. So let's see a glance of one of the activity in one of the chapter. Uh, this is how you can see discovery and exploration. Uh, I'll, I'm not going to read line by line, uh, but you must be uh, seeing it on the slide. But this activity talks about that uh, picking a little bit of soil with your hands and encouraging children to get a feel of it. You know, like, so children, what do you think? Like, uh, how does it feel? Do you think it is dry? Do you think it is damp? Oh, do you think it is rough? Do you think it is smooth? Hard? or grainy so but here i'm talking it at a speed but when you are going to do it with the children you have to pause and say give children time to think feel it actually feel it it is not reading the content and uh, asking them to feel so give them some kind of a time and let them feel and then they will uh, also smell the soil but uh, caution has to be there when they are smelling it and uh, then let the children do kind of a discussion with you and then let them write it. It is again an individual uh, work that itself is an individual activity as well as an inbuilt assessment. So my soil felt rough, smooth, hard or grainy. So you can see that a new vocabulary is also there, grainy, you know. Uh, my soil had, there could be nothing, there could be some pebbles. Of course, it is not written there, right? As Anurag ji said that uh, uh, this textbook, uh, you know, like uh, uh, textbook is a window for the outside world. So this is just an example and this is just a reference material. The child could find small insects then, but then you have to be there for the close supervision. So compare your soil with uh, the clay you made in chapter 5. So you will find that there is an interconnections with the units and you will also find there is an interconnectedness and interdependence within the chapters. So we have also talked about like what you have done in chapter 5. So when you will see that book, you will find that you we have done uh, such certain kind of a discovery and exploration. So let's go uh, and there is a talk also. So awaken a uh, sense of wonder. So it is not cleanliness is not important only for the humans. Animals too like to keep themselves clean. So uh, have you ever seen monkeys sitting and grooming each other? And you know, like, so this will help the child to uh, look carefully and look uh, around the environment with wonder. So again, as I said, there is a focus on developing competencies. Here you can see that the girl is taking an uh, impression on the paper uh, using the bark of the tree. So uh, very soon uh, you will be able to see these uh, books on the uh, NCRT website. So let's go further. Uh, so I'll just go quickly on because I've, I'm already talking about the pedagogy and inbuilt assessment uh, because there is still one subject left for you. So each chapter has been a stepping stone guiding us through interactive stories and dialogue, which I've already told you. TWAU offers a rich tapestry of narrative story experiences and dialogues to help children enjoy the textbook come activity book and look forward to reading it because there is a paras and there is interesting stories in this and there is a kind of variation in the way each chapter is presented 
So you will not find a monotony uh, in any of the chapter. An array of activities, you will find there is an art, values inbuilt. Of course, there is mathematics also, language also, and physical education is also there. So there is a small, short, interesting project and very, very interesting illustrations and some kind of a problem solving puzzles in the form of riddles, uh, which you must be waiting for it. And, and we hope that children are going to find it very interesting. And not to miss that, uh, we have encouraged using locally available materials in that. So in the end, uh, we'll say uh, that uh, this book uh, provide experiential learning uh, through active participation and it uh, offers learning as a journey of discovery and where uh, children are going to uncover knowledge through their own observations and inquiries has inbuilt assessment uh, that will help both the children and the teacher as well as the parents to measure the progress and tailor the learning teaching strategies accordingly. As I said, that it helps develop critical thinking skills and uh, by posing uh, open-ended questions. So final thoughts on TWAU. Uh, TWAU empowers children as thinkers, collaborators, problem solvers at the preparatory stage, and it engages children, teachers, parents, and also the community partners around us for meaningful learning experiences. So thank you so much for watching and let's continue to marvel at the wonders of our world and help our children grow as curious learners and teachers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Romila. Uh, so a lot of appreciation coming in for the exploration, discovery, and a new approach to the TWAU. And uh, because uh, in, from this year in the preparatory stage, we are uh, introducing uh, health education and physical education and the EVS in a different form as TWAU. So therefore, in order that children adjust to these, uh, uh, to, to trans, uh, so there is a smooth transition to these subjects, two weeks of foundational course has been offered by NCERT. So we'll be talking more about this uh, foundation, two weeks foundation course in, in, uh, in uh, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, in tomorrow's session. Uh, so there are two, three questions that I would like to take up. One is that, is there a computer uh, book for uh, grade three? So I want to tell you that uh, NCRT brings out only books in English, Hindi, mathematics, and the world around us. And we prescribe only these four books in grade three. So there is nothing like a computer book and we don't develop that. Uh, another question is that, uh, do we ensure transitions in the competencies from nursery to grade 12? Yes, we always do that. And everything, all the books that you see, grade one and two textbook, and, and then preparatory stage textbook, and then sixth textbook are in a continuum and uh, they ensure smooth transition. So, uh, and another, Mehek uh, Kapoorji, बार बार ये सवाल आ रहा है कि यह बुढ़िया किस पद पर आसीन है और हमने किसी बुढ़िया की पर्टिकुलरली बात नहीं की है तो मैं ज्यूम करती हूं कि यह शायद मेरे लिए होगा <laughs> मेरा नाम सुनीति सनवाल है और मैं प्रारंभिक शिक्षा विभाग के अध्यक्ष पद पर कार्यरत हूं एनसीईआरटी में और महक जी शायद आपको अपना जवाब मिल गया होगा और इसके साथ फ्रॉम हियर वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट टेक्स्ट बुक दैट इज मैथमेटिक्स so mathematics is again a very new approach and I invite Professor uh, Anup Kumar Rajput who is uh, uh, of course the coordinator for mathematics textbook and also head publications in NCERT. So welcome Professor Rajput and uh, thank you very much and uh, I hope this is the last session but not the least one and uh, must not be very boring as the subject name itself. Uh, I'll keep you all engaged in this presentation. Mathematics textbooks have been written in continuation to grade one and grade two textbooks. And the major objective which we uh, have earlier taken up for grade one and two mathematics, those have also been kept according to national education policy 2020 and the national curriculum framework. So uh, the major 
change which you will find this time in these textbooks, in particularly in mathematics textbook, is that we are not talking about much of the content. We are talking of about the breadth of the content and the depth. So depth is more important rather than whatever children will learn. They will learn with understanding and in depth. So there was a bigger concern raised earlier also that the slavers is too wide that teachers are not able to complete that slavers in a year, year's time or in maybe eight or nine months time. So keeping that in view, this time the content has been lowered, much, much lower content has been given for grade three with this understanding that lot of opportunities will be given to children to understand whatever has been written there. So I'll give you one uh, idea about these all textbooks. So <clears throat> one, the structure of the book. So there are 14 chapters, but these all chapters are very, very small chapters. Uh, not more than seven to eight or nine pages each. And probably you will not uh, have to finish up the chapter, normally which happens in our classrooms. Uh, teacher rush to finish the chapter, but because chapters are small, so let children enjoy whatever they are studying. Uh, this book, the chapters have been organized in uh, five different themes, numbers and operations, then introduction to fractions, shapes and spatial thinking, then measurement, which includes length, weight, mass, uh, capacity, uh, time, and then introduction to data. Because these are the years when children have started understanding about data around them and they use a lot of such data. So how this data is to be organized and how children should use that in their daily life. So there's initiation has been done in this textbook. Uh, the bigger themes like number and operations have been derived, divided into small chapters, large number of chapters and small, small coherent ideas have been included there. The key aspects of this, this textbook is there are several activities and tasks throughout a chapter for learning, uh, for learners. So uh, keeping in view that children should be engaged when they are learning. So they should be engaged, they should not feel that uh, something uh, unknown is being taught to me. So everything is from known to their daily environment so that they can relate it with their daily life and they can understand that this is my own life. So mathematics is not something which is foreign to them. This is uh, somewhere going to help them in their daily life. Uh, they, this whole idea of putting up the content and the uh, concepts are around the child's experiences. Uh, the child may have some of the experiences already through class one and class two, and uh, also uh, maybe at home. So these all are combined together. And when we are talking of grade three, the newer concepts, newer ideas have been, newer experiences have been introduced, keeping in view the earlier experiences of the child. So their children can make out meaning out of this and uh, uh, they should have simple procedures, estimations, etc. Then there may be the beauty of mathematics is that mathematics is having multiple approaches. One solution can be achieved through different ways. One of the examples which I like to give you is that if a child is being taught about addition of two digit numbers, or rather three digit numbers. Then addition can be done in different, different ways. There may be n number of different ways which children should certainly appreciate. So this appreciation will come when children are exposed to such experience, such opportunities, approaches, so that they may use any one of them according to their own understanding. The major difference which you'll find is that now Numbers have not been seen in isolation as ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. Numbers are seen holistically because in daily life, we do not use numbers in these ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. We use numbers holistically. So when we say that uh, 456 or 342, which number is bigger? So child sees, we should not talk about more about the mechanical rules of looking into hundreds than looking into tens and looking into one. They should have an idea of what do we mean by 456, how much quantity, how much is this number and then 342. 
how much is this number so that they may have an idea which number is bigger which number is smaller how much bigger how much smaller and so on so throughout the book you will find that this earlier uh, idea of putting in right directly from say once times hundred thousand and talking everything right from addition subtraction comparison of numbers uh, multiplication division and their standard algorithms so in place of that now we are talking about those the uh, systematic manners in which children may develop their own understanding and may their own ways of operating on numbers and understanding numbers. Uh, then uh, this whole textbook is somewhere fostering that idea of uh, independent thinking among children. So we are not imposing anything on the children. Whenever a procedure is being given, we say that children may think of another ways of solving it, another ways of having their own procedures, their own ways of putting into the things in that particular idea. So that children may understand that everything is not very contrived in the system. They, they, there is a lot of flexibility in the processes earlier we were not providing those so much flexibility we consider the mathematics is rigid there is one solution given in the book and that is the way only to solve the problem and all children should follow that that is somewhere now discouraged in this book no doubt we'll go with this for the standard algorithms and other ways so their children may have an understanding and then then they move slightly from the concrete manipulation to handling of abstraction in mathematics uh, but in class four and five that will be done because class three is the first class for the preparatory stage earlier we were having lot of pre-operational uh, activities being done with the children now children are moving slightly away from that and instead of understanding that uh, numbers are something which they can only count uh, through the objects and then they can write instead of that now they are considering they must be having an idea that number is an entity uh, with which they can play they can break the number they can develop number science wherein 352 can be seen as 340 and 12 350 and 2 350 and 2 there may be n number of other ways this is 200 and 150 and 2 so maybe n number of different ways in which children can see these numbers and then can uh, handle these numbers so uh, that number sense is being taken up into uh, in due to a bigger way in this in this class then uh, many interesting puzzles have been given in the book these puzzles obviously somewhere put give a recreational value to the mathematics where children understand that mathematics is not only a boring subject in which they have to solve certain given problems and that too in the process is given in the book through the process is given in the book and solving questions given in the book is the is sufficient to pass the examination and that is what the mathematics learning is confined to but no doubt children understand now with these books that mathematics is much beyond this no doubt our earlier books were also talking about the sort but how much our teachers and children were comfortable that we do not understand but this time that bridging between the understanding of NEP, NCF and textbook has been done so that teachers may use these textbooks in that manner in which the NCF has emphasized, the NEP has made its goal. So uh, keeping that in view, lot of puzzles have been given. Some of the puzzles are for the mastics. Some of the puzzles are from the dots, puzzles are from the numbers and so on. Then in the book, a lot of opportunities have been given to teachers to understand why a particular topic is being dealt in the book in that manner in which it is given, given there. Uh, teachers may get an idea how an activity is to be extended when something is to be done by the child at home or beyond the classroom, outside the classroom, then how the teacher can handle that what type of questions can teacher ask what type of context can teacher build up so that every child feels that it is my own book and i am learning mathematics for my life and not for only examination assessment is inbuilt in this whole process uh, we understand that uh, if we fix the assessment then teaching to test and learning to test is happening in our system which we should discourage somewhere. Assessment is only of that which child has learnt. 
no child should learn whatever is to be assessed so therefore major focus has not been given now on the term and examination term and questions and lot of questions in the end of the unit and so on but inbuilt at many places inbuilt at many places now we have put in such ideas so that teachers can relate the context of the child and children can feel that this is my own mathematics and i am learning mathematics to uh, to to uh, enjoy it and to use it in my daily life then lot of interactivity has been built up there are many aspects which you will see th through the course of this book uh, let us discuss let us do let us play and so on so all of these have been given in the book so that children must enjoy discussing among themselves their thinking must be somewhere reflected they may express it to their peer they may express it to the teacher teacher may ask questions or may provide opportunities to children to ask questions so because questioning is very important skill which normally uh, we 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 do not have in our own system then some other uh, uh, key aspects are interesting characters and themes have been given in the groups and all the mathematical ideas have been built up around those themes idea used and connected appre appropriately in other chapters so means children will not feel dissociated when they are learning one chapter now this is in isolation whatever we are learning so the earlier chapters which children have learned must be have some linkages with this chapter every new chapter so that children may uh, visit and revisit the earlier ideas whatever has been taught to them earlier they may revisit in this chapter in next chapter and in next chapter and so on so th there may be say for example some isolated themes may be there numbers number operations they are they seem to be related but then 2d and 3d shapes do not seem to be related but we have tried to put in these 2d 3d shapes then data handling then measurement in such a way so that children feel that the number number of number and number operations measurement they all are linked to each other so nowhere in isolation the topics have been dealt interesting stories and poems have been given i'll give you some examples uh, in the uh, which are there in the textbook say for example the story of zero is given the evolution of numbers in in, in india means the way these are being written with the group of tens this all small small stories have been given so that children may enjoy this and can feel pride that uh, these have been developed in india that's why uh we are also we can also do much much better work then uh border have been used with uh creatively uh in the sense that uh, the wherever the chapter is wherever the chapter is uh in on on a page if some space is there around the border it has been used say for example used as a number line uh used to write numbers used for measurement used to play games and so on so i'll give you some examples so let, let's have now the idea about the chapters this is the first chapter which is named as what's in a name uh, chapters have been named in a very very interesting way so their children may relate no doubt uh, from the name itself uh, in in some of the cases you will not make out what type of content is being dealt in the chapter but after reading first page you will get the idea that why this chapter is named like this then uh, this is a story of two children uh, deba and deep and uh, their primitive way of counting they are holding uh, by putting marks bars on on a wall and then cutting those walls when the animals were coming back when animal are going out then they are putting some bars and when they are coming back these are cut down so if all have been cut then it means all animals are back and if some are left it means some animals are not back and they have to go back to jungle to bring them back so uh, this is an interesting story which has been given there and uh, this gives an idea of classification 
when in uh, we classify objects then uh, data handling is integrated with this and a primitive way of counting how do we do counting activities have been given in the book so the children may uh, use this in their classroom also so we somewhere are expecting children to use this to count how many number of children are there in the class so either they can uh, use one to one correspondence wherein they can put in one pebble for each child and ultimately when children uh, they can count pebbles or when children are coming out coming in the class then they can once again count and then once again put in pebbles and then can say that whether number of children are uh, all the children are back or some children are not back and so on so this type of interesting stories are given there uh, we uh, have given some activities to for the children wherein they can count and classify the objects according to their uh, characteristics their properties this is for data handling say for example uh, mahesh kartik is the name given there and uh, there are some letters in these these two words and how many letters are there so how many same number of say for example mahesh is named with six letters m a h e s h so how many children are having their names with six letters how many children are having their names with five letters four letters and so on so that we, they can relate with their class uh, then there are some interesting facts given in this chapter wherein children are given the longest name of the place uh, in india the railway station the smallest railway station name ib ib od ot and so on so there are many such interesting things given in the book also and then extension of this activity is being given there there so that children are asked to now write down the smallest name around them means the name of the village name of the place name of the person around them which can be spelled out in a, in a smallest way so this type of extensions of activities are given in this chapter this is basically on data handling uh, then is another is for toy joy this is for three dimensional shapes uh, because the most of the shapes which are around children are almost three dimensional and from three dimensional they go to the two dimensional this is again an extension of uh, uh, grade one and two up uh, in up to class two they have learnt much about all these shapes also but uh, now they are going to learn the finer characteristics of the three dimensional shapes earlier they were only talking about what type of surface they are having whether it is round whether it is plane whether it is curved and uh, number of surfaces they are having but now they certainly will be having some idea of number of corners number of edges number of surfaces and so on so these shapes have also been named shapes are also being made then from one shape to another shape some compo some composite shapes have also been given here in this book so that children may uh, make their own shapes and these shapes may be made by from the shapes around them or maybe uh, the shapes which are given uh, in uh, somewhere in, in a kit probably you may be having some kits this is uh, one of the game which is given on the border uh, wherein children have to play this uh, with uh, tossing a die and then die will be uh, having when they are having one dot it will move to a cube two dots it will move to a uh cylinder three dots will move to this and that and so on so now they can move and uh, there is a start and finish space uh, finish place and children who reaches finish place earlier will be the winner and they can go back also so there are many such activities given so this is a uh, an, an a game a board game given for the children through which they can enjoy uh, the shapes they can enjoy the game and they can enjoy the uh, excitement in the game uh, who is going to win who is going to lose now what should i get so that i may win this game and so on. so this all is there and, uh, and this activities are there to identify different shapes children should identify shapes and then uh, they may construct and this is through toys around them so a lot of toys 
have been also given some examples of toys are given here. Children can use these around them. There may be many toys available at their home. Uh, some of them are like a box. Some of them are like a cylinder. Many of them will be composite where a box is being, a cylinder is being placed on a box or maybe a cone is being placed somewhere and so on. So let children discuss about them and children can have uh, their own understanding about the shapes and shapes and then okay, they can move ahead with finer characteristics as I mentioned about 3D shapes. Then another chapter is double century and the name is as clear that because up to class two children have learned about numbers up to 100 now it is up to 200 so this whole idea of putting in numbers or introducing numbers have been split into two parts now in grade three we are talking about numbers up to 500 so one of the chapter is numbers up to 200 another chapter is from 201 to 500 and uh, in this, you will find that uh, uh, the century word has been introduced because many of the children may be comfortable with this word while, list, while uh, watching a cricket match on their television set and must be having an idea what do we mean by century. If it is not mean, if, if children are not having any such idea, they can be introduced that 100 is called a century. And then there are many activities which engage children in estimation number one how many are these let them let them estimate then uh, counting exactly and counting obviously is not from one two three four five now they should learn counting in groups so there may be groups of 50 there may be groups of 100 there may be group of 150 and 50 and so on there may be group of 75 and 50 and so on. So let children break up these numbers into their own ways so that they can count these according to their own comfort and they can get ideas how many are these. So counting never means that physical counting is to be done. But now children should have an idea when one group is given how many can be these objects, how these, uh, how should we reach to such num uh, to find out this number and so on. Then verifying whether my estimate is correct or not my guess is okay or not uh, one game has been given here snakes and ladders and the snakes and ladders game obviously is as usual games but it is now uh, there are numbers the snakes and ladders have been placed differently so that children may uh, get ideas that uh, um, uh, from which number they are moving to which number if they are on the uh, uh, on if they are they have to move the longest ladder then on which from which number they they should reach so that they can climb the largest longest ladder and they they can go from which snake they can go to the lowest number and so also there may be many such questions which are put in and then children should physically play this game so that they must enjoy uh, there are certain other ideas given in the book and those are like say uh, when a number is being seen on a number line. So a number line has been introduced here with this idea that children now have some fairly good idea from class two about putting numbers on a number line, but that was only up to 100 or up to 50. Now from up to 200, how number line can be extended, how they can count now in groups. In addition to number line, one gil ladi has been introduced it was there in the class two also gil ladi is with the beads uh, uh weaved in a ladi and this is up to 200 so that and uh, after each 10 each group of 10 beads there is a different color so that children can count in number of tens now uh, with these colors and they can even now uh, relate number line with beads and then with the abstract idea of numbers. So slowly children have started building up abstract idea of numbers and they now are having another very important aspect on numbers is uh, the, the idea of one more and one less, two more and two less. So what will be one more than 99? What is one more than 49? What is one uh, two more than 148? And so on. So such type of ideas are being given so where children can devise their own methods of finding out one more, one less, two more, two less, 
and so on. Then is uh, vacation with Nani Ma and uh, this chapter is on addition and subtraction. Unlike earlier years, we were having separate chapters on addition and subtractions, but this time addition and subtraction have been combined into one chapter. And uh, again, these are there are two different chapters, but in one chapter addition and subtraction has been combined up to 200 numbers. Sum is not exceeding 200, different is so both the numbers are not more than 200 and so on. So uh, these are uh, given there wherein children are given opportunities to devise their own ways of addition and subtraction. Say for example, if a child has to subtract 78 from 100, so they may now add something to 78 to get 100. So such strategies have also been discussed here, but only giving an idea to the children. We are not giving exhaustive strategies. We expect that children will come up with their own understanding. Teachers have to provide, you have to provide them opportunities so that they should come up with their own strategies of doing these uh, sums. We are uh, putting in some magic tricks of uh, uh, with marbles. Magic tricks with marbles means uh, uh, there are uh, 50 marbles in total. I have uh, 25 in my hand. How many are there? Or I am I am able to see uh, 30. How many are in my hand? And so on. Uh, there is some uh, uh, idea of adding numbers on number grid uh, are also given there, wherein uh, that is very simple. If we um, move upward, then the sum is then number 10 is added from 1 to 11 to 21 to 31 and so on, from 5 to 15 to 25 and so on. And when they are moving horizontally uh, onward, they are means from left to right, they are adding 1 or when left, right to left, subtracting 1, coming down, subtracting 10 and so on. So there may be a number of different ways of doing these additions. Children are given opportunities of uh, using these all and finding out their own ways. Then another idea of magic sum is given there. Magic sum in the sense that uh, you probably may be having an idea of uh, these magic scares wherein the sum in of number, numbers are placed in such a manner. So that sum of numbers in a row, sum of numbers means in rows, sum of numbers in columns is same. Even sometimes sum of numbers and diagonal are also, uh, are also same. So such type, how such magic scare is to be built up? How children can make their own magic scare? How they can alter it to any other number? And so on. So these all ideas have been given here where children certainly must enjoy and they, they should come up with their own magic scares. No doubt in the book at this stage we have talked about 3x3 three three magic scare but later on in class 4, class 5 they may go for 4x4, four 5x5 four, five five and so on magic scares also. Uh, there are many activities given for addition and subtractions which are around the child. So all the uh, activities which are around the child are being given here. So their children may relate it with their daily life. Then fun with shapes, uh, the idea of shapes, 2D shapes now, 3D have already been discussed uh, in the chapter number 3. Now there are 2D shapes and obviously in isolation there are no 2D shapes around us. These 2D shapes we only see on 3D shapes. For example, on the, the cover of our notebook, the cover of book is a rectangular surface. So rectangle is not seen in isolation nowhere. So therefore from 3D to 2D, how can we move? And around the child's own lives, say for example, uh, in most of the houses in South India, maybe in some part of the Northern India also, people make rangolis uh, on different occasions. Uh, in South India, almost every day, every morning, rangolis are being made, columns are being made. These are two dimensional. So how are these made? How many shapes? What type of shapes are being used? What are the ways of doing it? How, what do we mean by a dot grid, an isometric dot grid? And so these all ideas are given. And relating the earlier understanding of the child about the square, rectangle, circle, and so on, these uh, the uh, understanding on the 2D shapes have been built up in this chapter also. 
wherein uh, an idea of uh, an angle is being given, but this angle is not named as angle because national curriculum framework uh, was not emphasizing on introducing the name angle. So therefore, we have used it as a corner, a corner of a 2D shape. Say, for example, we can say uh, a corner of a triangle is different than a corner of a rectangle or a corner of a square. A circle has no corners and so on. So such, such interaction is being made. Such ample, uh, examples are being give, given here. Then a lot of uh, 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 shapes are given. In this book, you will find in the end of the book, there are some uh, shape kits has been given which children can detach or the children can cut and then can use these or shapes in order to make their own uh, uh, interesting shapes, maybe the rangolis and so on. You probably may have heard about uh, rangometry shapes, so those can also be used if you are having in your school. Then uh, house of hundreds, again, uh, as I mentioned, this is up to five 500 and from 200 to 500 numbers are being introduced here where uh, the idea of writing, reading, then understanding numbers is all is included in this chapter. Then locating these on a number line, again extending number line up to 500 and then moving slowly and gradually towards the abstraction of numbers and getting an idea of how big 450 is how big uh, 500 is and so on. So these all ideas have been included. A lot of interactive uh, activities are being given there so that children may enjoy. And in all these chapters, idea about the assessing children through these all activities have also been given. In teacher's note, you will find that a uh, uh, lot of questions are given there which teacher can ask. Uh, the tools which teach can, teacher can use while children are learning uh, to assess them and so on. So Raksha Bandhan is the chapter which is uh, introduced, which is uh, from the introduction of multiplication and division. So as, as I mentioned, addition and subtraction are being taken up in the same, chap in a, in same chapter. Similarly, multiplication and division are also being taken up in the same chapter. And in this chapter, you will find that lot of opportunities have been given to the children to, make, to, to count objects in groups. So there are 10 groups of 5 each, there are 7 groups of 8 each, and so on. So how many total elements are there, how many total objects are there. So such type of activities are being given. And opportunities are given to the children to develop their own multiplication tables. And this time the tables have been introduced at times table. So you will find uh, how this times table help children and uh, in understanding and uh, writing their own tables and emphasis is given on development of tables and not on the cramming of multiplication tables. They should understand and they should remember lot of multiplication facts, but not by cramming the multiplication table or singing the multiplication table. They should certainly use them again and again in different different contexts. So that ultimately a time should come when children say, now I remember what do we mean by nine sevens are and so on. So such type of ideas are given here in this chapter. And uh, the context is built up on our festivals, on our daily celebrations and so on. So this is one of the Raksha Bandhan celebration wherein father's sister is coming to the house and with children and they are celebrating what type of preparations they are making, how they are <coughs> going to the, uh, to the sweet shops to buy sweets, how they are uh, 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 celebrate, the, they are uh, decorating their house and so on. So a lot of such things related with their daily life, real life situations. Fair share is on uh, fractions. This chapter deals with fractions and only the idea of half and quarter is being given here and one third is also. But these half and quarter once again limited to only few shapes, but in daily life context of the child. So say for example, how many halves will make one, how many quarters will make one. If two quarters are given, how many quarters are to be added to make it a whole? If three quarters are given, how can we make it a whole? In a, so there are many such activities and exercises given for the uh, children to do. Then is house of hundreds too. This is again 
uh, focusing up to uh, numbers up to 999 and a very this is this chapter is beginning with the very interesting story of uh, 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 the king asking uh, his uh, his prime minister how many crows we are having in our town and the prime minister says that we are having these uh, 975 crows and then uh, king asks how can you say if if i count then if i get the smaller number then what can i what will i do then the uh, minister says that okay sir then in that case we can conclude that some has gone out to meet their relatives and if they are more then we can say some have come in the city to meet their relatives and so on so with this counting has been introduced up to 999 and a uh, lot of such understanding is built up then fun at a class party and this is on the uh, concept of measuring length and measurement of length uh, no doubt uh, measurement of length through <coughs> body part is introduced in earlier classes up to class 2 but the idea is again extended now to come to the uh, understanding of 1 meter how much is 1 meter and how it is built up then how can we measure things in meter how can we find out whether things are more than a meter or lesser than a meter and so on so a uh, lot of such activities are given in this book then filling and lifting is on uh, measurement measurement of capacity and uh, weight rather mass so how much water i can drink how much juice i can drink how much in this glass how can we measure this all and similarly how heavy it is how can i measure this uh, one particular object is it heavier than the other object if i cannot lift both the objects how can i find which one is heavier which one is lighter and so on so lot of such activities are given and again the idea of one liter has been introduced only not the milliliter in earlier books you may be finding in earlier syllabus uh, that milliliter were used to do in class 3 but now only liter has been introduced and similarly kilogram has been used uh, introduced in this class and only a basic idea of liter and kilogram is being given then give and take is on addition and subtraction once again but <coughs> extension of that addition and subtraction up to three digit number and a lot of activities are given where, where we expect that now the development of that uh, algorithm of addition why adding ones and ones then tens in tens and hundreds in hundreds and so on then when ones and ones added up to more than 10 or 10 then what should we do why are we carrying on one more uh, digit to tens then similarly if tens are more than 10 or uh, 10 then what should we do with the tens digit and so on so this all idea how uh, it is to be introduced has been given with the dean's block and dean's block probably you may be having idea wherein the block of 100 then block of tens and ones these all are there and how addition subtraction can be done by using these all blocks these algorithms have been introduced then the next chapter is on time time goes on measurement of time and here again in class 2 we have already discussed about uh, the measurement of time in terms of complete hours but here in terms of half and quarter hours is also being given how the time is to be read when hour hand minute hand and second hand is are given there how then how our whole day activities are to be uh, 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 organized uh, what how time is being reckoned with that and then one interesting activity of making your own sand clock children can make their own sand clock uh, they must be seeing it while playing different games so uh, idea of making up a uh, uh, sand clock is also given here then uh, last chapter is on suraj kun fair uh, almost many of you must be knowing it but this is the uh, national crafts mela which happens in suraj kun place in haryana district near uh, Delhi, uh, sorry, in the state of Haryana near Delhi. And uh, uh, this is a crafts mela wherein the craftsmen from different parts of the country come. But this has been now included here uh, to, to have the idea of patterns 
around them. So patterns, then counting, then uh, uh, measurement and so on. So many such ideas are given. Here again, idea of reading of maps is introduced here. Uh, giving a top view is also introduced here so that children have understanding of reading up of maps. So that is something related to the test book. Thank you very much. And uh, we, uh, you may have some questions which you can ask uh, while we were discussing this. Probably there may be many questions. If you have started using these books, obviously there will be a lot many questions. Even if you have not started using, you can put in your questions later and also. So thank you, Professor Rajput, and hearty congratulations to your team and you. Lot of appreciation coming in for uh, for the new textbook, and people are appreciating that children are really going to like these uh, textbooks. Uh, so with that, with that, we come to the end of uh, today's session where we discuss the five textbooks for grade three. And uh, with that, I think I I take this opportunity to thank Director NCRT, Professor Dinesh Prasad Saklani, who led the entire effort of developing these textbooks. I thank uh, Dr. MC Panth, who's the ch chairperson of the NSTC, Professor Manjul Bhargav and uh, Sri Anurag Beherji, who were a constant support for the textbook development and gave a lot of uh, guidance in the development of the textbooks. I uh, thank uh, Dr. Ranjana Arora, who's the head curriculum department for her um, uh, inputs. I thank uh, Shri Gajananji, the head of the program office and all the members of the program office who worked with uh, the faculty members in the development of the textbooks. And uh, uh, last but not the least, I thank all the coordinators of the textbook who relentlessly worked and uh, uh, so, Professor Rajput for mathematics textbook, Professor Varda for English, Professor Chamanara for Udu, Dr. Neil Kant for, um, for Hindi, Dr. Romila Soni, and Professor Kavita Sharma for TWAU. So, with that, uh, we meet again tomorrow, the same time from 2 o'clock, to discuss the foundation program that we uh, said for two weeks foundation program for physical education, TWAU, and uh, art education. So with that, with that, I hand over to Ms. Shweta Moon uh, this session from CBS. And of course, so sorry, I, I thank uh, Dr. Ram Shankar, Director Training. Um, I thank uh, Sri Sandeep uh, Jain, Joint Secretary CBSC, and, and uh, Sri Himanshu Gupta, Secretary CBSC, for taking out time for addressing the participant in the inaugural session. And uh, I'll be failing if I don't thank all the teachers, master trainers, and all of you who have been with us in the last two hours and uh, attended this session. And thanks for all the appreciation that uh, you are sharing on the new textbooks and the new approach. So thank you once again. And over to you, Shweta ji. Thank you so much, ma'am. First of all, I would like to congratulate Team NCRT for developing such an interactive, relatable, user-friendly, colorful, and creative textbooks. And we are really privileged today to get this opportunity to know more about this, uh, these books, and which we can see from the comments of the participants that they are really excited to you know, use these te textbooks in their classrooms. On behalf of CBSC, I once again, uh, I would like to once again thank Professor Saklani sir, Professor Ranjana Arora ma'am, and team NCRT to extend such a huge support to, uh, to the teacher, teachers through such a wonderful textbooks to make, to make the entire teaching learning process in the schools more creative and interesting. Thank you so much, ma'am, and for to and we really look forward uh, for tomorrow's session on uh, arts, uh, arts education and physical education and further program, for further bridge program and further discussions with you. And uh, thank you so much for tomorrow. Uh, the YouTube link uh, for tomorrow's program is already there in the circular, and for KRPs, the link will be shared in the respective WhatsApp group. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shweta. Just a minute. Uh, that uh, yeah. 
I was getting this question again and again that uh, do we use these books from this session? If you are using the NCRT textbooks, yes, then you have to use these textbooks from this session. Even if you have got the older ones, you have to use these ones from this uh, this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.